All right. Let's get this show on the road. All right. You're fine, kittens. <laughs> because you have to. <laughs> All right. So this is gonna be the uh, the not as fancy pants tutorial. No. Uh, I'm gonna be going through a the actual route for any percent, um, and I will also be showing off the uh, levels that you need to do to play any percent on the collection um, on the PlayStation 3, which is done by uh, Sensario Games. I'll be showing that off. I don't know every single thing about the collection, so I do apologize if I gloss over something or I miss something that is doable on the collection or um, is not doable on the collection. I will try my best to explain things that are and are not, but I don't know everything. Uh, there are a few runners that run on the collection. If you are wanting to run the game and you only have access to the collection, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking them out uh, in their runs on speedrun.com. I will uh, be throwing the splits you see here, and splits for running on the collection uh, on speedrun.com. I or a mod will. Uh, I don't know if I have the permissions to do that or whatever. And then I'll also be throwing up the guide on there as well. Uh, it'll be highlighted here on my Twitch channel, and I'll upload it to my YouTube, and like I said, I'll throw it on the thing. <clears throat> so anyway, what you're first going to want to do is you're going to want to clear whichever file you're going to be starting on. It doesn't matter which one you do, it doesn't matter if you have a file on the other two things, so long as you start from selecting a new game file. And as soon as you press X here is when you're going to start the timer. Right afterwards, you're going to want to press the start button. I prefer to mash, you don't have to mash, you can just time it or whatever. But, and mashing just as a general overview, whenever I say that, I'm meaning press the button as many times until you have gotten what you're going for. Uh, you're going to press that up to bring up the pause menu, and you're going to go down to options, and you're going to load the game. And I'll show all of that off here in a second. <clears throat> so what you're going to, so the reason why you do this is there's a cutscene that plays, as you can see Sly is pulling out his Binocicom. Anytime that a Binocicom cutscene is triggered in this game, all that counts, or all that matters for it having been counted as being watched is that the Binocicom is opened. So if you, for instance, trigger the cutscene and load the game, it will have skipped the cutscene. Unless you load the game a second time, but we'll get into that later. If you die or take damage during this animation, which again we'll get into a little bit later, it will also skip the cutscene. So we're going to just simply go into options, load the game, and we're going to load the same file, and this is important, whenever you load the game to skip a cutscene, you have to load the file that you're on. So if you select the very first file, you need to load it. If you start on the second one, you need to load the second one, and so on. And this will skip the cutscene. Now, there's nothing really super preferential here. All you're going to do is you're just going to be going over to here. So it doesn't matter how you get off of this. I jump down. I know a couple of the runners run down. Some people jump down here. It, it really doesn't matter. This is all up to you. <clears throat> right here, we're going to get to the very first skip of the game. So you're going to want to get on top of this little antenna. And you're going to jump to this corner. Now you're gonna want to not just like mash the jump. If you do, you'll not you will have a fight to make it. So you want to try to time your jump, your second jump and the double jump, for a little bit later. So that way you have the height and the distance to get up here. And you should ledge grab. Now you can make this without ledge grabbing, but it's extremely difficult and there's there's really no point to it. Um, so just make sure that you go for it and get the ledge grab. Now. There are two ways to come up from a ledge grab. There is just tapping X, which puts Sly up from the ledge grab to a stable point. He just jumps up and lands where he can land. Like this. This will, if I remember correctly, will always work unless you don't have enough height. 
like unless there's like a ceiling or whatever, so slide gets pushed back down. Otherwise, if there's no ceiling, you should always be able to jump up to a part where you can stand. Uh, the second way is you can jump with directional input, which is used in a couple of places, um, but I might end up glossing over it because it's not super... It doesn't matter too much. Um, the only time it ever matters is if you just need to tap jump, which I'll explain when you need to tap jump up. Uh, from here, we're going to jump out and hold uh, up right on the left analog stick to jump out and around this little vent thing. And then as soon as that first jump has ended, you're going to cut back to the left on your analog stick and double jump a second, or double jump. And if you see the little like wall underneath the vent, we're going to try to hit that and slide underneath the, uh, the death plane here. That worked, but it should not have worked. Uh, from here, <coughs> realistically, again, it's it's all about just however you want to do the movement. Normally, I end up right around here, and the most optimal way to go through here is to just walk down on this, jump over this with a single jump, and single jumping is very important. If you don't need to double jump, don't double jump. It loses time. It's not a whole lot that it matters in the long run, or it's not a whole lot that it matters in the short run, but if you do it 30 times, it, it, that adds up. You want to hit this one, and you want to single jump on this too. Uh, if you would like, you don't need to do this, but pressing square while you're in the air does change slice hitbox a slight bit, so you can get up here a little bit easier. And you just want to fall down, hit this, or jump over it and jump into the van. You can't escape me, Raccoon! Now, if I remember correctly, I believe this is where the difference between the collection again, on PS3 and, given an and running on a PS2 disc slip. comes into play. I was surprised to see how well she took it. I think every single Finally, one of the these little file animated, like special for all animated cutscenes, I believe this, all of them I can, family and can be skipped by of resetting our treasure. the game if you're it playing on the HD just collection. Bouncing on my father's knee. Now, the you HD see, collection I come from a long line of master thieves overall who kept the all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Thievius Raccoon. Anyone who read it learned to be especially sick, Oh wow, which is because it, I reset. I apologize for my volume being After lower. All, this should be a lot better. Thank you for saying something, James. Ordinary people. Uh, you rip off a master criminal, you know so the collection is the slowest people. version to run the game on. Well, However, supposed to inherit the book. If you're just wanting to pick up the game to just run it and have some fun, there's no reason not to just run and learn on a collection. And you can not have to uh, to recite these cutscenes. <laughs> it's a little bit of a joke or whatever. Um, there's not much else to talk about during these cutscenes. You kind of just watch them, or you know, like I said, reset the uh, the game on the HD collection. Um, and what's going to be happening is after this first cutscene ends, uh, you're going to want to make sure towards the very end of it that you're pressing the X button a lot, mashing the X button. Together because there's going to be a text box that's going to pop up that tells you what the autosave logo is and what it does. Hello, Silva. Um, so you want to, for any percent, you want to run on what is called the NTSC PlayStation 2 disc in a NTSC PlayStation 2 or backwards compatible PlayStation 3. Uh, you can't access any of the other portraits, you have to just select Raleigh's here, so we just select Raleigh's and go into it. Uh, what NTSC stands for in... I guess just plain terms is uh, North American, so that is uh, the United States, and I believe it also covers Canada. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of I want to say they're the, they're the same versions. Hello, Petrus. On a whim, he tried his hand at a bit of piracy. And the reason why you want to run on the North American version is on PAL. Uh, there's a trick called uh, Mugshot's Catapult, which is for any percent 
essentially a required trick because of how much time it saves. Even though it is kind of hard to learn and get down all the movement involved with it, it saves so much time that it's going for it and just messing around and trying to get it is almost always going to save you time over not doing it while you're learning. I know, South America is considered a PAL as well, for some reason. Uh, and the running on the collection is, on average, I want to say about 10 minutes slower. T seven to, and, and I, don't, I don't remember how much it is. Um, another runner, Gnistin6, uh, he had a better thing, a better like analysis for it. Um, but anyway, that, that kind of stuff is irrelevant for just a, a newer thing. So we're going to get right away into the first level of the game, a stealthy approach. Uh, this sign is going to be your friend and also your enemy. <laughs> uh, this first E right here. Not this one, but the first E in the word keep. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get up here and you want to kind of position Sly so that his nose is going to be pointed into the second E as you walk down in here. And you're going to get stuck and the game is not going to know what to do with you, so it's going to send you up out of bounds. Like so. Now normally it won't always be that perfect and that consistent, but ideally that's what will happen. Uh, and you want to get up here on top of this. Uh, if you can't do this, if you just have an endless amounts of trouble doing this, um, you can just run down through here and watch the cutscene. Uh, the cutscene, if I remember correctly, is short enough that loading the game to skip it and going through the van animation and walking back through doesn't actually save any time. Um, and I will go through the movement from uh, from that and from getting the sign trick. Uh, most likely what's going to happen is you're going to barely get enough height and you're going to land it right around here. Or you're going to ledge grab. From here you're just going to want to jump up here while holding towards the rock to get what's called a slope jump. And what a slope jump does is it gives Sly a little extra oomph to both his jump and his double jump. So you can get up here and continue going. Now here you want to run up to about here. And if you're having trouble with this, you want to take a second to line it up. It's more than acceptable. Because you want to be careful. If you jump too far to the right, you're going to hit a death trigger here. And you're going to die, and, and that's awful. So you want to make sure you're jumping to the left. And you're just going to land down here like like so. If you run through and trigger the cutscene, you're going to end right around here when the cutscene ends. You'll be around there. You just want to run over here, get on top of this, and then just do what's called cane jumping. It's kind of an advanced technique. If you can't get it down, you can't get it down. Um, it doesn't save or lose any time to not just go for it versus walking, because walking on these normally is slow. But essentially... Um, when you press circle to latch onto these things um, and the timing just comes to you you want to press X as it like hits uh, to kind of carry yourself a little bit forward if not still just jumping after you latch on this is still faster than walking so just just do that instead if you can't get the, uh, the trick but anyway if you're coming through here like the normal way. You want to run through, you want to double jump up here. Whether you ledge grab or not, doesn't matter. Um, you just want to get on top of here and then jump up to here. Now that particular part of the movement is the same. You have to, you have to just do it like that. But here you can split it. Um, these bottles, it is very important that you do not hit them because if you hit them, you will trigger a cutscene with Bentley. And if that cutscene is playing, you cannot skip the next cutscene um, where Bentley talks to Sly about the weather machine that's up in the sky and blah blah blah. So you can either come over here to the left and walk around them to be safe. Um, if you want to be faster, you can jump over the bottles. Uh, if you want to come around here to the right, you can come around here to the right. I know a couple of runners do that. And you want to just fall down here like normal. And you want to kind of hug this wall so this guy doesn't hit you. Uh, as long as you're hugging the wall and running forward and don't stop, he can't actually hit you. And then once you're right right around here, you're fine. Uh, and this cutscene skip is something that's very tricky. There's many, many setups to it. Um, 
my setup is I kind of, as I'm coming up here, I'm kind of running and aiming towards this little hill, but just slightly to the left of it. Um, and you want to hold, like, you want to make sure you're holding the control stick forward the entire time, because what you're going to be doing is running into the cutscene trigger that's basically from the edge of this pole all the way down to right around here. And you want to trigger that while you have that momentum sly slides off of the edge while you pull us out the binocicom. It should look something similar to this. Now, like I said, there's numerous ways you can do that. I don't think I've seen more than two runners do it the same way. Um, and it's perfectly fine. And now, another thing that I haven't gone over yet is, uh, is the coins. And this isn't this doesn't become too big of an issue until you're starting to get it down. And you you start not dying and you reset the checkpoints. You start getting good enough to where you can do segments in, in one go instead of multiple goes. Um, but you want to make sure that whenever you have an opportunity to collect a coin, that you don't have to go out of the way to do it. You want to make sure that you're trying to collect them. It's so like here the the run is normal. When you die, you just run up here. Um, but you want to try to be collecting the coins with with cane swings as you can. Now, this is probably going to be something that is going to be kind of a heated heated discussion or whatever. Um, I think this trick is more than doable as a beginner. Uh, if you can't do the trick that I'm about to show, you can just run down and run all the way down over there and proceed through the level like normal. But there's a cutscene you have to you have to watch, and this isn't too bad. You want to get up here on top of this rock, and you want to just single jump over here onto this. Uh, if you can't make it, you're having trouble doing that. You can get up here and just double jump ledge grab, and then tap jump up, or not tap jump up. You want to jump and then push forward a little bit, and you want to get on top of here. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, if the Binocicom does not open before you die or when you blow it or whatever, if you have any... Just make sure that you see the Binocicom open, even if it only opens for a frame. Even if none of the portraits pop up and it literally just shows the little blue things, there you go. You know you're good to go. So when you get up on top of here, and you don't want to move your camera for this, moving your camera for this makes it immensely harder. You see how I have Sly positioned directly towards the camera? If you need to take the time to line it up to do this, take a couple of seconds, make sure you have it lined up properly. But you want to hold directly down and just double jump. Okay. Not, not like that. <clears throat> a double jump like this to aim up here. Now let's take, this will take a, a little bit to, to get down pad. It took me a, a few tries to, to get it down. But once I got it, I was, I was good. And as soon as you ledge grab, you want to just double jump, just bash X, double jump, get up here. You're, you're good to go. Sometimes you'll fall down if you ledge grab right around here. Sometimes you'll ledge grab, uh, and if you're mashing, you'll just fall down. But 99% of the time, when you get this, it'll work fine. Now from here, we're going to be doing some out-of-bounds movement. Um, just follow my exact path, and you, you'll never have anything to worry about. Right here, there's a little gap. Just double jump over it. You can single jump this, uh, and single jumping is faster. You can make it with a single jump, but I just I recommend while you're learning, just do double jumps. And you want to come over here. There's kind of like a little seam underneath me, if you can see, where it goes from being like a normal like pattern to that like liney pattern. Uh, you want to stay, try to stay to the right of it, and just double jump over this. If you ledge grab, it's fine. And you want to run over it to this way. The way I line myself up is there's this rock below me that I'm standing on right now. Well, I'm not standing on it, but I, I aim for this, and they land here, and then I just run straight forward like normal, and it fall down. Now, on the other side of this gate is that cutscene that I was talking about. Uh, it's very slow and explains to you how to jump on hooks, which we already know how to do. We just jump and press the circle button, uh, just like everything else, and you're good to go. So now we're going to run forward. Um, this is basically whatever jumping here there's, there's no there's no real trick to it um, here obviously if you're doing this in a run you're gonna have a different cycle than I am but just wait for these um, 
You can try to do some, some things like that if you want, but you really don't have to do that. Uh, there is a jump there that I'm not going to go over because it's very difficult and only saves one second. Uh, wait, right, yeah. This section, you're going to want to make sure you don't get spotted by the spotlights. Uh, getting spotted by the spotlights is bad because you have to hit this to lower the gate down again. Um, if you do have to do that, hit to lower the game, or hit to lower the gate, and then double jump as well, and you should be able to jump over the gate early. From here, you can jump on these, and you can just walk forward. You don't have to jump over them, you can just walk. And uh, we're done now. So just break the key, and move on. Now, these little uh, key animation things like this, uh, you can walk into them like that, but you can also swing your cane into them, and it's it's the easiest thing in the world. Um, so if you swing your cane as you enter them, that thing I was talking about earlier, where if you have momentum while you're doing something, um, that also works for this. So you'll slide a little bit uh, as you plot the key to throw it into the, the lock, which is it's neat. It just saves a very minuscule amount of time, but it's free, so there's no reason not to do it. I split as the loading thing kind of comes up. You don't have to split here. You can split when you hit the key, when you load into here. It, it doesn't really matter, um, but that's just that's where I split. Uh, here, all of the hub points have a set spot. Uh, if you've played the game, you know this. If you've not played the game and you're just wanting to pick it up as a run, um, all of the hub worlds that connect all of the levels so like this, have a set spot where you go to when you load the game. So we're going to go down to options, we're going to load the game, and we're going to load our file that we are on. Um, at this point, you should, ha should have uh, cursor memory, so you shouldn't ever have to worry about messing up and loading the wrong file, so you can just mash X through this. Now here I'm going to pause, because I'm going to explain um, my movement here. I don't want to miss my cycles. <clears throat> Yes, I, so like I said, I, I, I'm going to gloss over some things. Um, I always thought the sign was doable on the collection, but I, I guess it's not. So if you're on the collection, you cannot do the, the sign thing. Um, but again, I, I don't know if that's 100% like certain, so check out the, the people that run on the collection um, to get better information on that. So anyway, so there's a cycle that we're going to try to make here. Uh, we don't have to make it. If you don't make it, it's fine. Um, but we're going to run over here directly forward to that window. And in there, there is a charm. And we're going to get this charm the first time that we run through. Um, you don't have to get it on the first time. You can get it on the second time. I do it on the first time just because it's easier. I don't have to worry about remembering it. Um, but then after that, just follow my movement precisely, I guess. Here. This trick um, is a little weird. I'm gonna go over it because it's not it's not too terribly hard. Um, and then I will go over the um, the other movement. So I guess I'm not gonna be able to make my cycle. It's whatever. Um, now I'll, I'll do this, and then on the second pass through, I'll go over what it looks like to do the other route. So. You're going to jump on this little railing, and you're going to aim for the little lamp post, um, and then you're going to double jump from the lamp post up top. Just, it's not too bad. It's not it's not super hard, but it it is a little tricky, but it does save some time. So I would recommend messing around with it in practice, but don't do it in runs until you you feel confident with it. Now here, if you've made the cycle, uh, the movement's going to look something like this. Um, I do not believe you can make this not doing the lamp strat. I don't think you can get over here quick enough if you do the route where you um, you would climb up the pipe after you get the charm, and you would come up and jump over the little roofs and then land here. Um, if the guard is positioned right around here, 
or has just made the turn, you're fine. You you can make the cycle. You shouldn't do... I will be going over those as we get there, or if I don't mention it at all, assume that you shouldn't be doing it. So, you're just going to run forward, and right about here, as he starts the turn, you're going to want to cut down. Um, and try as hard as you can to not ledge grab, and also try as hard as you can to not do this too early. It'll just, it, it, it'll take time. Um, you can also do it too late and get hit, um, but it, it just comes with time. Uh, it's not that bad. You spend 10, 15 minutes, it's all good. So you just cut down, and what that'll do is it'll trigger the guard to attack you, and his shot will hit the ground and blow up close enough to destroy the generator, uh, allowing us to skip having to unlock and do it ourselves. Now, if you run through here, you're going to hit this trigger, which is bad. You don't want to do that. It's slow. Loses lots of time. So instead, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to jump around. You don't have to land on here. You can land over here to be safer and just jump around and, and continue to go. And here, you're just going to run out and run straight into the cutscene trigger. And as soon as the Binocucom opens up, you want to go down here and you want to save your game on uh, yeah, I'm gonna save your game and then you want to load it back up <clears throat> now if you didn't do the uh, other route which I will show right now if you are not doing the lamp thing, and you had to get your charm, whatever, um, and come up here. Like I said, you won't be able to make the cycle, but you will be able to make it on the second try when you don't need the charm. I waited a little bit, um, but you should be fine. You should be good to go. Now you have to do this again, because since we didn't unlock and destroy the, the generator manually, it doesn't save as having been destroyed. What we were doing is saving having collected the charm, so we didn't have to go out of our way to get the charm again. And you want to jump around it again. And then, now that you've loaded the game, you've skipped the cutscene, you're good to go. Now this is where things are going to get kind of tricky and kind of difficult if you're learning the game for the first time. Uh, there is two ways that you can do this. Uh, I'm not going to show off the second way, because, or the first, the old way rather, because in my opinion it's harder and it loses so much time over the new way. So, remember, anything that has to be unlocked with keys, there's always going to be a trigger. So, make sure you don't hit them and jump around. Also, I'm going to ask you guys to please stop messing around with this. I don't want it to be super unnecessarily serious and whatnot, but I also don't want it to be just a, a huge joke. Um, so, so please, for people that are wanting to learn the game and want to actually have constructive things said, tone it down a little bit. So, after you've jumped around here, you're going to want to... Well, I guess I'll, I'll explain what super jumping is first. I kind of got sidetracked. So super jumping is something that can be done two ways. You can either time it, like so, and if you're timing it correctly, there will be no dust underneath Sly. So this is all correct. This is too slow. The dust clouds show up. Now, I've been running this game for about a year now, so it's it's easy for me to do it this way, but it doesn't save any time over just swinging your cane a little bit right before you land. Um, and this gives you, I want to say, if not twice, three times, or if not three times, at least twice the amount of time to press X. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just pressing square and then immediately pressing X right afterwards. And every time you'll see that there's no dust cloud, which means I am doing super jumps correctly. And this is this is um, imperative to the second part of this skip and then the second part of the skip in Mugshot's World, which is going to come a little later. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to position Sly like so, where his nose is kind of pointed in into the cannon like this. And then you're going to come around... And you're going to do super jumps, which I'll, I'll show it all in total. 
and you're going to want to come down to here and you're going to want to get stuck in between these barrels right here and this little gate thing right here. Now it'll look better um, when I do it entirely. <clears throat> they want to get stuck right around here in, in this general area. If you get stuck too far to the right, um, you'll miss the trigger because you'll land too far to the right. And if you go too far to the left, you will miss the trigger because you'll jump over it. Alright, cool. Hi, it's small child. Okay, hi. Yep. Bye bye now. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so yeah, that's what you're gonna do. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna go, go over the second way. Um, I feel this way is easier anyway. So, like I said, get positioned right here, and then chain your super jumps. Uh, double jumping makes it easier. However, single jumping, I believe, is a, a tiny bit faster. Anyway, you wanna get right around here, and if you have to take the time to line this up, you can. Um, so just jump down and land in here. Now if you double jump and you don't swing your cane, uh, you should get popped down, if not instantly, at least much faster than if you single jump into it or double jump and swing your cane. So what you want to do is double jump into it and then don't swing your cane. You can swing your cane if you feel like you need a little bit of extra time to make sure you can line it up properly. So make sure that you have it lined up properly and whatnot, and then as you're doing it, you're good to go. Now, you should be able to tell if you're going to get it very easily. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting it here. Uh, so long as any portion of Sly's model clips through the cannon just a little bit, you will hit the invisible trigger inside the cannon, uh, and you'll be good to go. Yes, that is something that I did miss. Um, as Silva said, and I wish I, I wish I would have caught that beforehand. Um, <coughs> there is a little bridge that goes over from the wall to the little silo thing. There's an invisible wall that hangs down a little bit above that. So you want to make sure you're single jumping under that, and then you can go back to double jumping. Now here. Uh, this cutscene, uh, when you load in, as soon like about a second after you break in through the window and the autosave pops up, uh, you want to, if you're on PlayStation 3, press the PlayStation button to bring up your menu to come down to reset the game. Now, I am fairly certain this is also faster on the collection, so long as you're not playing on the disc version, because you have to go through extra menus to select the game. Um, it is faster on, um, I believe, fat PlayStation 2s, slim PlayStation 2s, and backwards compatible PlayStation 3s, and I believe the download version of the collection for this game. And you just want to reset the game, and you're good to go. Now, obviously, you don't want to wait that long, because while that menu is up, the cutscene is playing in the background. So you want to do it as quickly as you can, but you don't want to do it too quickly or you'll get something that says uh, this operation not available here. If that pops up, just go back down and reset the game. Uh, nothing, nothing will be hindered by doing it uh, too soon. The game literally won't let you corrupt your save file on PS3. If you're playing on PS2, you have to reset the game by pressing the power button one time. Just lightly tap it so that we don't turn the console off, but you uh, reset the game. When you're loading back in, you want to mash start to skip through all of that. Uh, this boss fight is very self-explanatory. Um, to do it quickly, you want to make sure that you have the least amount of distance between his hops as possible. Uh, but there is a set amount he has to go, so it's fine. Uh, and when he, com when he comes down and is available to hit, you want to make sure you hit him as close to the center um, spot as possible. Because it makes his jump easier. So that's, that one was very quick. You'll notice when I hit him way over here. He has to jump much farther back, so it's much, much slower. You can very easily lose tons of seconds here uh, if you're not paying attention and making sure you hit him towards the center. Um, 
otherwise, like I said, the boss is very self-explanatory. He jumps around, a, a, I think, it's five times, and on the fifth time when he lands, he deflates so you can hit. Uh, this phase is very interesting. There is another way you can do this. I'm going to show you the way that you should be doing it when you're just learning the game. Uh, and I'm not going to go over the second way uh, unless... And I, I, I'll, I, guess, I guess this is a good enough time to bring it up. Um, no, 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 I'll, I'll just... I'll just leave all of that stuff to the very, very, very end. So you want to come, you want to load the game uh, after you've landed and his tongue has gone back into his mouth. Uh, you want to press start, you go into options, you want to load your game, and then you want to hit him for the final time, and the autosave should pop up. If that has happened, you know you're good to go, and you can press select. Um, I split when you hit him. Uh, I know other people split when they come in here and select the hideout. Um, it doesn't matter. Whichever one you want to do is perfectly fine. It's just 100% up to you. Uh, optimal menu movement here is left, left, down, down. Um, so you just try to get into the habit of doing that. You don't have to memorize it. It's, it's fine. Uh, when you're in here, you want to be mashing right until the menu pops up and you've moved over. And then you want to start mashing X to select mugshots area. <clears throat> Uh, and during this cutscene, if anybody wants to throw anything at me, feel free to throw anything at me. Um, Next up, the notorious kinda, kinda rambling on, <laughs> I feel like, but at the same time I just want to make sure what everything is explained well enough. Definitely made up for in uh, Turns out he wasn't and the video's gonna be way. long, but that's, that's more than acceptable, the the litter. in my opinion at least. <laughs> a neighborhood weakling. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. It was there that he spotted his first gangster, and he knew instantly that that's what he wanted to be. It'll get uh, a little bit easier, and it will speed up a little bit more. <coughs> when we get to individual levels, I feel like. Because there's not huge skips that require tons of explanation for the most part the individual level things are, are fairly self-explanatory and i'll still be going over them enough to where it can uh, it can feel as though they're explained well i've always wanted to go to that thriving american boom town Starting off in a rocky start, um, make sure you don't climb this pipe and jump up here and land up here. <clears throat> if you do, uh, you'll trigger a cutscene which is very slow. Um, what I do and what most runners do is they land on this rock and they jump around like this. Uh, this can be kind of tricky, um, so if you can't get it, it's fine. Don't don't worry. Um, you're looking at that. That's sad. I'm gonna go and get another charm, because the game auto saved and took away my charm. Uh, now I'll get back to the explanation in a second. <laughs> um, if you lose your charm, don't come back and get one. If you mess up the trick and you lose it in a run, make sure you don't come back to get your charm. It, it doesn't save enough time to warrant coming back and getting one. Uh, just proceed through the level like normal, it's fine. So if you can't do the trick where you jump on the rock and jump around the wall, um, you can start to climb this pipe, and then once you get about right here, you can just jump out and over like so, and it is so much easier. Um, you can also, as Silva said, you can also jump around here on the left. Um, it's somewhat easier. <clears throat> it's what we do in Hundo, but we have to get bottles. Um, and jumping along the right side is just faster, because uh, you, you don't have to cross over, you're just already lined up. Once you land here, it's just normal movement. 
Uh, you can single jump onto this rock if you don't feel comfortable, just double jump. You can also single jump over here. Uh, you want to single jump onto the mattress and then get up here. You want to make sure you double jump so you can land on this side of the platform. If you land over here, you get kind of a, a weird little stutter step and you have to walk up and over. Uh, so just make sure you do that. I double jump and press circle to land on that. You don't have to, you can single jump. Uh, and here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run along here and double jump up to this rock, single jump onto this one, and then double jump onto here and run at a precise angle to run into a cutscene and slide off and take damage and skip the cutscene, which is why I got the charm. If you don't have the charm, it's fine. Just run into the cutscene. It doesn't lose enough time to warrant going back and getting a charm, so don't worry about it. Um, otherwise, it's really hard to explain this while you're up there, because while you're up there, it starts to swing back and forth, and that can affect whether you get to slide off or not. So I'm just going to do it in one single run through and just try as hard as you can to learn from and follow my movement. Now as you're falling down you want to make sure you're mashing X because as soon as you take damage you can press X to cancel the damage animation with like sliding down and whatnot um, to get bounced back up here. You can single jump down to the car, um, just make sure you get off of it quick, quick enough. Um, you can't do the single jump, you don't feel comfortable. Just double jump like normal. <clears throat> I'm just going to run through here like normal. Make sure you don't get hit by the guard. So you want to double jump over his thing. Uh, it doesn't matter how you climb this. Um, I get up here and I just double jump. Or I, rather, I single jump up these and then jump onto the mattress. Um, skipping that first spire point is faster. Because you don't need to do it. And then you can just jump up here. <coughs> Jump over the guard's attack, and just run straight away here like normal. Uh, if this thing is slammed down, I'm just killing this guy so I don't die. If this thing is slammed down, as you're right about here, you know you're safe to just run through all the way. Um, you can get kind of stuck on this thing, so I would just recommend jumping over it as you come to it, so you can you not die. Now we need this charm for. Uh, any percent if you're playing on the PlayStation 2. If you're playing on the HD collection of the game, you can skip this charm because you do not need it. Uh, or rather, actually no, you you do you do still need it. Um, so never mind, disregard that. You you need to get this charm. No, don't forget it. Um, now you should never be able to make this. Uh, if you're if you have been optimal, you should never be able to make this cycle, uh, unless you're doing a very very hard optimized route, and just 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 don't. So you want to wait, and make sure you don't get crushed, because you don't want to lose this charm. If you ever lose this charm at any point from here on, make sure that you die. Uh, well, check your coin count. If your coin count is very very high, you can try to get a couple of coins in the next area. Uh, if not, just die and respawn at the checkpoint and run back and get it. Uh, that, that's just self-explanatory movement. Come up here. Uh, when you break this this vase, it is this key case. Uh, it's very imperative that you don't slide too far, um, or that you don't break it too close, because the trigger for opening this won't spawn. If you're too close to it, you have to run back and then run into it again. So just make sure that you break it from, from farther away. Normally this isn't a problem, but it, it can happen, and when it does happen, it's annoying. Once you're done, just run to the trigger, and you're good to go. And again, I split on like the fade-in of the hub map. <clears throat> so here, this game, we're going to load the game to load warp, and then we're going to load the game again right away, because there's a cutscene. Now, uh, if you're having trouble with this first part of jumping over this guard's light, um, you can just wait a little bit and wait until he turns around and go and kill him. Uh, but it's it's not that bad uh, when you're running. Well, eventually he'll turn around. 
when you're running, you want to just jump right at the edge of this thing and double jump, and you should be able to get close enough to swing the cane and hit him. <coughs> now this is where our paths are going to diverge um, between playing the HD collection and playing <coughs> on the PlayStation 2. Apologies. Um, if you're playing on the PlayStation 2, you can go straight away, uh, and you can skip the next next decent bit. Uh, I'll, I'll put a timestamp uh, where I explain the catapult. Um, but I'm going to do the, the movement for the collection first. Uh, after you kill this guard, you're going to come over here, and you're going to run up here, and you're going to come and you're going to do the level Murray's Big Gamble. Now the reason why we have to do this on the, the collection, where we have to do these two extra levels, is the catapult that we do on PS2. Uh, you cannot do on the collection. So you want to come up here, and we're going to do this level. Hello, Ted. <coughs> and there's a cutscene here, so you want to be mashing start to bring up the menu. Um, if I remember correctly, um, and I, I didn't actually touch over this, when you load the game to load warp, that cutscene on the collection, uh, you cannot load the game to skip it because you load back into where the cutscene is. Uh, it's also the same thing here. So what you're going to want to do on the collection, actually, is you're going to want to view map. <coughs> you're going to wait until the, the cutscene pops up, and you're going to view map back to the hideout. And then you want to select the portrait again, and then you want to select that level. <coughs> and now the cutscene should be skipped. Yes. So here you want to just try to make sure you're paying attention to where I'm aiming at. Um, getting these angles down will take time. Once you get it down though, you should be able to kill the majority of these guards without Murray being scared. Um, I snipe these early, you don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier. <coughs> I shoot this barrel to kill this guard back here that spawns. Um, because if you do it that way, Murray doesn't get scared, but you don't have to do that if you don't feel comfortable with the timing. Otherwise, it's just learning where the guards spawn and making sure that you're pre-firing the guards. And you don't have to mash for these, you can just single tap them. Um, I am mashing is just a little bit easier. And I don't like, mash really hard, I just like tap it a few times. Make sure you don't hit Murray. Uh, hitting Murray in these fireworks sections uh, regardless of if he has a charm, will be an instant kill. I'm done. <laughs> now, when Murray's uh, about where he's at right now, you want to pause the game, <clears throat> you want to go down to options, and you want to load the game. And what this will do is during the fade out Murray will run, collect the key, and it will skip the key animation. And then you want to be mashing select so that you can bring up the view map again. And you want to just view map back to mugshot's turf. <clears throat> now this is the fastest way to do it. If you don't feel comfortable, because this way you will have to jump over and kill that guard again. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can just press start and exit the level. Both of these ways is faster than watching the key animation. Hello, Johnny. I just want to come down like normal. <clears throat> I'm going to be going to Boneyard Casino. Now, if you're not doing both of these tricks, if you're not doing the first trick, I'm not going to explain the second trick, it is very difficult. Um, if you want to see what the second trick looks like, I, I'll, I'll explain some of the harder things that I don't go over, I guess at the very, very end. Um, for, I, 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 I guess some things, I don't know. Um, it's really, I don't know, it, it, I guess it'll just depend. Um, Anyway, so if you're if you're not doing this first skip, uh, it might be faster to just go do the race, but I don't know for certain. 
Also, I'm uh, I'm going to go get a bottle of water really quick because I underestimated how long I was going to be talking, <laughs> or not how long, but how much I was going to be talking. So give me one second. Hello, Ricked. And I know you're not, we're not here earlier, but I'm trying to keep it as, as um, non meme or jokey as possible uh, for those that are actually interested in learning the game. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to come over here right away and you're going to hit this and it will open the door. Now this first trick uh, in the level is very, very easy. Um, and it's it saves en enough time to where it's worth it. Uh, just follow my movement there. Kind of just glossed over it. Make sure you don't get spotted by these guards. If you do, it will almost be certain death. So make sure that that doesn't happen, or you will uh, you will die, and it will be sad. <clears throat> this trick, you're just gonna want to hug this uh, red thing, I guess, uh, and just single jump over it, over the fence, and you're you're good to go. It's very, very easy. Um, there's no reason not to be doing it. Here, you just want to follow my movement. To, uh, my movement. If you need coins, uh, if you're really, really close to a charm, and you didn't get the charm or you lost it, uh, you can do this to, to get some coins to try to get the charm. Because you will need it afterwards. You want to kill this guard, and you want to just run down here like normal. And play through the level casually. Um, if you want, you can try to make this jump. It's kind of tricky, but yeah, it's, it's a little, 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 little time save. It's not super hard. Hello, shiny, and hello, Valerie as well. Oops. I haven't talked about the race at all um, because you shouldn't be doing the race. You don't have to do that level. You only need three keys, and the three fastest levels are Rocky Star, because you have to do it, Boneyard Casino, and then uh, Murray's Big Gamble. Uh, here you can jump over this. Uh, you can jump over these, whatever. Whatever, is, whatever works for you is basically how you get through this. Uh, as long as you're making sure you're not taking extra routing, you have to, you'll be fine. Strats four races. No, because I don't, uh, I haven't gone over the one race that we do, and we don't do the other race. Unless you mean, like, racing other people, in which case, no, this is just a learning tutorial. <clears throat> um, down here, make sure you land on this. It's very difficult, or it can be. Uh, this first one will spawn these things. If you're double jumping and holding it, uh, you should be, you shouldn't ever hit the, uh, the yellow lasers on this first part. Oh, come on. Can't believe I goofed that twice. After this, um, just making sure you're timing your double jumps, and you should always get it. I'm a little bit out of practice. You should jump up here, and you want to swing your cane and press start right afterwards. And this is what it should look like. The autosave should pop up. Uh, it should be in this little, like dark and sand and whatnot, and you're good to go to just exit the level. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do this because I need the uh, wooden wall to be here. Um, but if you're on the collection, you want to go onto the circle, unlock the thing, and then hit it to, to break down the wall, like, the casual way, or the casual way. <clears throat> if you're playing on PlayStation 2, um, the, the disc copy of the game, and you were playing on the North American version, um, to make this a lot easier, you're gonna break the sign if you want, you don't have to, 
Um, and we're going to do Mugshot's Catapult. And this trick is very, very, very difficult. Um, there's a... Like, like with any trick in the game, <laughs> for the most part, there is an infinite number of ways you can set this up. It's all about personal preference. Uh, I'll be showing you mine, but you do not have to do it this way if you do not want to. Um, what I try to do is I try to line up sly um, point and point sly at this kind of an angle towards this general area of, of the wall. And I try to put my camera not directly behind sly, but just a little bit to the right afterwards. And I'm going to do a single jump like this. And then as Sly is descending from that jump, I'm going to swing the cane and hold top right after I swing the cane. Uh, and try to get stuck in this little this little nook right, right here. <clears throat> now if you do this correctly, um, you should get launched up uh, really, really high. As you're coming up here, and the control stick movement will always be different depending on how you set the jump up for yourself. Um, as you're getting launched up, I mash the X button. I like you have, you have to pull back just a little bit on the control stick after you get launched, and then you want to push forward again a little bit after that. Um, if you don't do that, you'll bonk on the bottom of this, and you'll be sad. So make sure make sure you do that. But I mash just in case I get a ledge grab, so that way I can get jumped up here. <clears throat> From here, you're going to want to double jump over here, and if you do this, I would recommend jumping if you're waiting to make sure you don't slide off. Um, and you need to be on this side, and we're going to jump over to here now. Uh, I also mash X here, um, because it is possible to get this in such a way that you ledge grab and if you ledge grab you want to double jump up as, as quickly as possible so that's why I mashed the X button from here you want to just get up here you can ledge grab or you can try to get this ledge grab unless it doesn't realistically matter just make sure you get up here and we're gonna run all the way down here to about right here where Sly is kinda positioned in, in this kind of, kind of a sense <clears throat> we're gonna make a blind jump to this thing. Now as you can see this is spawned but the rest of the world behind me is despawned and that's because the camera is set in the second part of the hub world whereas Sly is in the first part and when I do this the camera is in the first part and we're gonna be jumping to the second part. <clears throat> Once you're here you're gonna keep that same angle and you're gonna just double jump up again and now both Sly and the camera will be in the second portion of the hub world. <clears throat> From here, you're just going to run straight. Um, if you need to turn the camera to make sure you don't fall off of this edge, you can. Um, so we can have some visual, rep visual representation. Uh, if you don't need it, it's fine. You're good to go. Um, you can walk off of this down here. You can jump. But this is where you want to jump off and get down to here. Now, I forgot to, uh, to load the game to get my charm back. Um, so I'm going to have to get a charm, but it's whatever. Um, this is where things get very, very, very difficult. The catapult in itself is already hard, but this is probably one of the hardest things for beginners to learn that is required. Uh, you're going to want to position Sly in this corner to where he's kind of pointing at this. Now, you don't have to be precise with this, you don't have to be perfect, but so long as the general idea of Sly is aiming towards the corner, you're good to go. And you're going to want to start super jumping. And you're gonna hold, you're gonna bring your chain to about here, and you want to get as close as you can to this. Uh, if you want to wait, you can wait. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, if you have a little bit of momentum, it makes it a little bit easier. But we're gonna jump down to here, and I was just walking forward, so I got pushed off. Um, but that's where you're gonna go. Um, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> so 
so I can show off what you're supposed to do on the collection, I guess. <laughs> now, I'll show off the collections movement in a second. After you've landed here, and you need to make sure you continue your super jump chain. So I'll show it all off in full after I've explained everything. <sighs> after, <laughs> make sure you don't you know, you know, do that. Like I said, uh, th this is only happening because I'm trying to stand here and the, the couch keeps pushing me off. Uh, when you're jumping, you're fine. You won't have to worry about it. But once you've gotten here... Uh, you can single or double jump over to here. You're going to get right here. And you're going to jump to behind the mustache. Now, if you've ledge grab, this will be a little bit harder. And I'll show how to do it with both the ledge grab and without a ledge grab. Um, but you want to get stuck behind there, and then that will work. That's how, that's how you do it. If you are on the HD collection of the game, I'm going to come all the way back here so I can just show the movement in, in, in its entirety. And I'll, just like I said, I'm just going to timestamp specific things when they start. <clears throat> Open this up, break this. If you want to collect the coins here, you can collect the coins here. If you need them to get the charm or whatever. Um, you're going to come running through here. You are not going to kill these guards. If you kill these guards, it's going to spawn a cutscene trigger in front of Mugshot's face that is going to break your super jump chain. You're going to come up here and follow this movement. As if you were casually coming over here to back alley heist. Except instead of going to back alley heist, we're simply going to jump out of bounds over here. And you can walk along this. Jumping is easier. Um, and as you can see, we're, we're right where we need to be at. So this is what this movement will look like um, normally. And then, instead of landing on the mustache, you would land behind it, and you would die, or you would take damage, rather, and you would get shot through, like normal. <clears throat> now, I need to get a charm, and I don't remember where the quickest one is. So, I guess I'm just going to go and get the one in World 1 again. And I will be highlighting this, Rick. I'll also be uploading it to YouTube. Now, if you have lost a charm, and you can't collect the coins or whatever, and you need to come back to get this charm, feel free to do so. Um, you don't need to save after you've collected it. All you need to do is make sure it lands on slides back. <clears throat> and you can just exit back to the hideout. And come back, because you need a charm to do this. So I'm going to be here. And remember that if this is here like this, you can't, you can't practice the catapult. You have to practice the catapult with uh, the car not being, or the wood, like the wood not being broken. Okay, and the movement for it, and the super jump movement. I guess I guess I can explain it a little bit more. <clears throat> um, you can move the camera to make it easier. I think it makes it harder, but you can move the camera um, if you would like. Um, when you're like this, obviously you want to be holding down right, or if you have the camera position like this, you want to be holding just directly right, uh, and kind of just get the feel for it and kind of adjust it mid-jump. Now I'm going to get a ledge grab. If you get a ledge grab, don't worry. You can just jump up like this. And one thing to note is when you are ledge grabbed, if you're just standing still and you're not putting any analog stick input, Sly will always move slightly forward during his jumps. So you want to make sure that when you're trying to line something up that you're pushing, you're pulling back a little bit. Um, 
when you have the ledge grab, you have to j j jump towards uh, Mugshot's uh, mustache with the intent that you're going to get a ledge grab because you do not have enough speed. So if you are too aiming too far to the left, um, you will just bounce off. And if you aim too far to the right, you will slide off as well. So you want to make sure you're aiming kind of towards like the middle part of his mustache. And you should be good to go. I didn't get a ledge grab there because my jumps were timed perfectly. Um, but most of the time you will get a ledge grab. Again here, uh, this cutscene is faster to reset whether you're playing on a fat PlayStation 2, Slim, it, it doesn't matter. You should always be skipping this cutscene. Also, hello Peacock. I'm sorry I did not say hello earlier. Also something to note, if you're playing on the PlayStation 3, if you're playing on a backwards compatible PlayStation 3, when you reset the game, you need to remember to turn your controller back on. <laughs> Word. Now here, just follow my movement. Um, there's not too much to talk about. Uh, jump when mug when you hear mugshot pull out his guns. Um, there are things you can do to kind of manipulate his movement, but it's all pretty advanced and kind of hard to just like explain. <laughs> Make sure after you hit the last mirror in the first phase that you hit mugshot, because um, it skips a cutscene and it's it's easy to do. There's no reason not to do it. Um, on this phase, I go to the right um, to get the movement the way that I do it. You don't have to do it that way, you can just cut to the left. Um, the way I do it uh, makes you not have to jump over Mugshot's guns at least twice, or twice more, but it doesn't realistically matter. You can single jump that gap, but if you don't feel comfortable with it, again, just just single jump. And then Perry, you want to do the boss fight like normal casually, or like you would casually. If you want to get a little um, risky, you can do two of these in one go, um, but it's really hard. Now there is a strat you can do here. Um, I think it's really hard and kind of unnecessary. It saves maybe one or two seconds, and if you mess it up, you have to redo the entire boss fight. Um, but after you hit this, the, la the second to last mirror, you can just jump from the spire point and hit the other mirror and die to skip the ending cutscene. Um, but I'm just gonna show it off this way. Just hit it like normal. And then come over here and swing your cane. Uh, you have a really decent time uh, to pause after you hit the mirror. If you don't feel comfortable, just load the game and then hit the mirror. But you wanna make sure that you do that. And that will skip the cutscene. And then you just mash select afterwards to bring up the map. And you want to go down, down, down. So three down inputs is the fastest uh, movement, the fastest menu movement. And you get, you're good to go. Oh, and you want to split rather than when Mugshot takes damage. I goofed. It doesn't matter. You can also split, like I said, on the, when you select the hideout again. Realistically, it doesn't matter so long as you're remembering to split. The third member of the Fiendish Five was the infamous voodoo priestess, Ms. Ruby. Born into a family of mystics, other children found her scary. Teaching herself to summon the undead provided what few friends she had. A career in crime allowed an adult Ms. Ruby to punish the world for fearing her as a child. And this is where the run, uh, in my opinion, starts to get kind of interesting again. Or it starts to get a little bit more interesting. Uh, it's really cool. People tend to want to jump in and start learning the game because of the cool skips at the very beginning. You get to skip the hub worlds. Um, I like doing those, those skips. I think it's really cool. Um, but I also like kind of playing all the individual levels. I think it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. Uh, 
a, a, a new dynamic kind of take on the run where you, you go from skipping worlds to doing everything. Um, although this world is, in my opinion, or it is my least favorite. <laughs> Here, uh, it doesn't matter how you do this movement, just, just follow my pathing. Uh, don't kill this mosquito, it spawns a cutscene. Uh, if you need the extra momentum, you can swing, or the extra, like, I guess range, you can swing your cane to try to hit the trampoline. Uh, make sure you're not double jumping. Just jump and press circle and you're good to go. Now here, there's a trick called Nuka Jump. And it's not that bad. Um, and there's no downside to going for it, so I'm going to explain it. Um, right here. Uh, right around here, you're going to want to jump and aim for the the like the little leafy part, I guess, of the platform where the charm is bouncing at right now. Uh, you're going to want to aim kind of towards that like rightish direction, and you're going to want to delay your second jump uh, for a, a decent while afterwards, like a like a second, half second, or a second after you do your first jump. And then as soon as you do that second jump, you're going to want to press circle. Um, and if you do this correctly, you should ledge grab or just outright clear the jump up and uh, get the charm. From here, you just jump over here like normal and you're good to go. Uh, don't If you don't get it, no worries, it's fine. Um, just do the platforming like normal, you'll just slide down. The, like You want to make sure you press circle again, because after you whack off of that, um, you want to be making sure that you're going to land back on the vine, and you'll just slide down like normal, do everything. Um, I guess what I should point out, uh, I, I can't do it now. Um, I can't just already show it. When you get on top of that vine, oops, when you get on top of this vine, um, after bouncing off of this, as soon as you land on it, just jump over here. There's no reason to do the rest of the casual level. Um, you can just jump over here, and I guess I'll, I'll show that. Just so it's understood what I'm talking about. I said, you know, you do this too low and you miss it, and I go, oh no, just don't worry about it. Come through here like normal, it's all good. As soon as you land on this, just jump over here, and you can easily clear this gap. Now, uh, we're doing uh, another slope jump there, um, where you push up against this and jump up. It's kind of difficult, because the surface is weird, so if you want, you can get on top of this rock and double jump over here to get the ledge grab. Uh, you can also do it from the side, over here, uh, and you're good to go. Uh, you don't need to kill this guard. Um, you can just jump over here to this tree. You want to aim for right up around here, uh, and then you're going to jump around to the left and aim for there. And that'll take some getting used to. Um, there's a different way to do it, but I don't know how to do it. And in my opinion, it's a little bit harder anyway. So just mess around with this, learn it. Um, even if you clear with the ledge grab, you're still fine. You'll always be, you'll always be fine to make all these cycles. Um, even if you've died and you have to you restart the checkpoint and you do the trick again, these cycles are always consistent, provided that you haven't messed up something during this movement. Uh, otherwise, just follow my movement through here. And you don't have to jump over the huts. Uh, I do it just to save some time. Um, this key, you don't want to jump up there and get it. You want to jump up and swing your cane 
as you're going through it to collect it optimally. Um, it's easy, that's why I'm taking the time to explain it, otherwise, it's fine. And then you just want to run up here and complete the level. And again, with these, these ones, I split as the map pops up. <clears throat> For the layer of the beast, want to load the game like normal. And layer of the beast is over here to this right. I'm going to single jump onto the trampoline and then press circle after you've gotten enough height. Um, that's the way I've found to be, I guess, the most optimal, but it doesn't realistically matter how you do it. Um, here, you want to run into the cutscene and then load the game to skip it. Uh, I believe this still works this way on the collection, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, from here, you're going to want to jump up here and get on top of this. If you want to double jump, it's fine. Um, and then you want to pull directly back on the control stick, double jump up here and press circle. Um, you can mash circle to make sure you have, have a higher chance to get it. Um, but for the most part, just mess around with this. It's, it's tricky, but you should be able to get it. Um, double jumping and pressing circle is faster than walking on this. Um, the majority of this is pretty self-explanatory. When you get here, um, I could explain cane jumping again, um, but it's really hard to do this with cane jumping, so I'm just going to explain this the normal way, um, or the, the, the easier way. Uh, just fall down and ledge grab and then tap jump up this, and you should land up here. And then you're just going to jump around the wall here, up to here. And you're, you're going to get up here out of bounds like this. Um, I'm not going to explain the other way. Um, just because it's it's really hard to, to, to do it that way. It's not really hard to do it that way, but it's... I, mean, I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll just show it. It's not that bad. Um, as you're coming up here, you're going to want to get up here. And then, as you latch onto this, you're going to want to immediately jump off, press circle, immediately latch off of this, and then do the same thing here. Uh, that's just a quick way to do it. If you don't want to do that and you want to just walk up here like normal, you can. Um, and you want to jump off and you want to aim towards the second from the right brick. Um, and press circle, and as soon as you press circle, you want to press X. And then kind of do a delayed double jump to get over here. Uh, it's finicky and it's kind of hard to learn. Uh, if you mess it up, you know it's 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 weird. I'm reading chat, Jake. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, from here, um, make sure you don't go too far left or right. Uh, it looks like you have more room than you actually do uh, up here. Uh, here, you want to just double jump to get up here in this ledge grab, uh, and then here's where it starts to get a little wonky. Where you have a little less room than you think you do. So just be careful, follow the route exactly. You can just walk down here um, to get out of bounds. And then here you want to get close to this, and you want to do, again, a, a slope jump, where you hold up left to slope jump up this wall, and you should ledge grab here. From here you just tap jump back up, or rather jump up and press up on the analog stick just a little bit. And then if you need to turn the camera, you can. Um, I don't, I just hold left. And you should land around, right around here, or so. From here, just just come over here and complete the level like normal. Uh, this is where we're gonna start getting into the the key breaking things. Um, you can skip all of the key animations by either loading the game and then breaking the the base, or the quick way, which is just hitting it, pausing, and, and pressing exit level. From here, this is what movement looks like to Piranha Lake. Uh, you don't have to do the cane jumps here like I'm doing. You can just walk like normal. Uh, when this guard turns around, or when you feel like you're comfortable enough with jumping down and hitting him, jump down and hit him to kill him. It's faster to walk than it is to be on the things. I'm just doing beginner stuff. Uh, 
this opening cutscene, just press start and restart the level to skip it. And this is just a minigame. Uh, there's, there's not too much to go over here. Um, I have a video, I guess, series. It's like two or three videos where I go over my thought processes when I'm playing these minigames in general um, already. Otherwise, the majority of minigames is just kind of up to, to luck. There's not too much you can do uh, to help yourself, especially in this one. Um, you just kind of work with what you're given, make the the best of uh, the cards you're dealt, so to speak. Uh, you shouldn't ever fail this. Uh, it's not. I'm not like saying that to, to kind of to put anybody fails this down. I guess. Um, it's, it's you have a lot more time to do this than you think you do. While you're in in the heat of the moment and you have your you know, your actual timer and the end game timer running against you, you, you can get stressed out when you're, you're first learning, get kind of worried about making sure you know you miss a fish like that and you're like oh no you know like it's, it's, it's the end of the world and it, it's really it's not it's fine. Um, and just make sure you're remembering which torches you have and haven't haven't lit already. Now when you're coming up here, this is kind of a, a hard-ish strat. Um, after you dock, you want to push start right before Sly like lands into the key. Uh, sometimes <laughs> this will happen. I don't know what causes this, uh, but sometimes you can just land here like this, and you can like walk around the level or whatever. But um, if this happens, you just want to swing your cane and pause, and you want to go down to view map. If you get the other way, where Sly launches into the cane, uh, you want to pause before he lands into the the key, and then come down to the map. And you want to wait for this to pop up, and then you want to just hit left when this menu pops up, and go back to the dark center. Uh, if you can't get it, and you pause too early, and you don't see the autosave pop up, just unpause. If you don't hear the autosave pop up or the animation. Just unpause, watch the key, it's fine, and just do the, the level like you would casually. And come back to the trampoline and bounce up. Uh, after you've bounced up, I'm going to press circle to latch onto this and then immediately jump off. And jump over to here uh, and press circle. It's a little bit faster than walking up. Uh, and you want to go around to here. As soon as you get here, you can just make this jump. So just double jump. Uh, if you get too close to that guard and you hear him this thing, hit him and kill him. Uh, otherwise, you're fine. Now, you want to make sure that you get this charm. Uh, you don't need it, but it's very, very helpful to have. I'm going to kill this guy just for to, to explain. Uh, you can jump out and around this. Uh, you can just do this and double jump around. But that is really difficult. Um, and just kind of pay attention to where these, guards, these, these ghosts are. Uh, if you can't do that, just kill this guy. Um, the easiest way to kill these dudes is to just hit them and stand still until they run into you and die. Uh, and then smash this and run, run through like normal. You don't have to kill this guy, you can just run around him and do this. Uh, again, here you can jump around the vines, skip it, but it's finicky and weird, so just, just run through. Uh, you don't have to kill that guy if you don't want to. Uh, you also don't have to kill this guy, you can just skip killing him as well. And we're going to do a weird thing here. Um, I think I'm fine. Yeah, okay. Alright. We're going to get on top of this little thing right here, and we're going to jump out to this part of the rock, and then I'm going to jump up over here. Oops. Oh, we're not going to ledge grab this. <laughs> so we're going to land here, and I'm going to jump over here. And it can be hard because the camera is a little finicky. Uh, then you're going to jump up here. <clears throat> now, a couple of ghosts might spawn if they do kill them. Uh, and then after you've killed them, there should be no more that spawn. And you're going to want to aim for right about here or so. And you're going to double jump up here. And you should ledge grab, and you'll get up here. Once you're up here, um, you can play the level, 
casually if you want, but it's really slow and kind of hard, and there's some guards that can trip you up. Uh, well, instead, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get to about right here, and you're going to want to make sure you time your double jump to get up here, and you should ledge grab. Once you're up here, you want to get up here and come out of bounds, and you want to follow this route exactly. Um, you want to get come over to here, and then you should walk like this, and you're, you're fine. You do not want to jump straight to the key. If you do, you will fall into an area and you'll get trapped. Instead, you want to jump over to here, to the left a little bit more, and come to the left side of this big tree. And then land down here. And once you're here, just break the key like normal, and you're good to go. Welcome back, Shiny. From here, we're going to be doing another out-of-bounds skip. Um, we're going to be slope jumping up here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to land, and then you want to jump into the, the tree, and then as you land, you want to jump up and push towards the tree to slope jump up here. Uh, this is kind of finicky and difficult, uh, but you'll get it eventually. It just takes time. From here, uh, you want to just run forward like, like this and land on top out of bounds over here and follow the movement exactly. Now this guard will be different in runs. Um, you're always going to have to kill him generally, but just, just pay attention and kill him if you need to. And then jump down here, wait for the mask uh, to come down so you don't get sniped by the guards. If you step into the light, uh, you'll die, you, you'll get hit, and, and you'll be sad. So just don't do that. It's, 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 it's bad. Here you just want to do that and walk along this, <clears throat> and then jump onto this vine, or this, this, this little pull here, and come all the way up to here. Now, when you're on here, this guard can't spot you so long as you're not in the air. <clears throat> as soon as he turns around, or as, as he turns around, you're going to aim towards kind of where these two spike logs meet, and you're going to jump delay your jump just like a half a second and then double jump and then do your double jump while you're holding directly forward and that should allow you to get up here <laughs> don't be impatient like me and just wait for the guard to turn um, and you should land up here perfectly if you don't happen to make it and you get hit uh, and you have a charm you will land back on the vine and you or you'll land back on the bone and you can use your invincibility frames to jump back up here and not have to worry about hitting the rock or whatever. And you're good to go. Come over here and kill the guard. And you're going to want to land on top of this. Uh, once you're on top of this, you're going to jump up here and ledge grab. As soon as you get this ledge grab, um, and when you get this ledge grab, you're going to want to jump up to here and then wait for this guard to turn around and jump up to trigger him to attack. Double jump up again and hit him. Now there are two other ways to do this that are quicker and a little bit more advanced. Um, where uh, you don't have to worry about that. Um, as you're watching runs, as you get better, you'll start to, to learn that. Um, I can show them off. Uh, so it's so it's more understood what I'm talking about. Also, show what it looks like to just use uh, uh, iframes here, and you can always make it over here to kill this guy. <clears throat> now. There's a second way you can do this, um, which would be exactly like this. You run up here and you get him. Now, those are the only two ways that I'm going to show you. There is another way you can do this, but it doesn't save nearly enough time to be relevant. So just, just do these two ways. And then once you start to get a little bit better at the game, and you're starting to feel a bit more comfortable with the movement, 
and you're getting these down consistently every time and not having to worry about it, and you're like, man, I really wish I could do something faster, then start watching some of the top runners and seeing what they're doing at that point. Um, you'll be good to go. From here, just jump up and get this and follow the movement exactly. Um, hit this, get this charm. <coughs> you're going to need it. You're going to want to make sure... I'm going to pause so Ruby stops talking. You want to make sure that you get this charm and that you keep you, you try as hard as you can to keep it through the remainder of this level, Ghastly Voyage, um, the next minigame, Downhill Cooking, and um, if you have it going into Ruby, you're, you're fine. So long as, as you have a charm going into Ruby, you're, you're good to go. Um, we'll explain why a little bit later on. From here, you just want to jump through the wall and come over here. And double jumping and pressing circle to get onto that is faster. Uh, from here, you, you, you can single jump all of these, uh, and it's faster. But if you don't feel comfortable with it, double jump them. It's more than acceptable. And if you've done this all quick enough, you should be on pace to make this cycle. If this fire has just went out, you're fine. And you can just go through this as quickly as possible. If not, you have to wait and just, you know, play it like you're playing it casually, waiting and making sure you don't get burned. And from here, you just finish off the level, kill the guard, break the candle, and slide the vine to victory. Now, it's worth noting, you can hit the key from the vine and softlock. Uh, and it's, it's sad. So always make sure you get off the vine and land squarely before you do the, uh, before you break the key. Also worth noting, uh, cause it's, it's, it's simple to do. Whenever you're walking along that vine, always point your camera away from the center because it makes the game run a little bit smoother. It's very, very, very minor, but there's no reason to not Uh, this level is is just an auto scroller. You can speed up some parts, but the very beginning of it is an auto scroller, and then afterwards, <coughs> there's some techniques you can do to make it go by a little bit faster. So just make sure that you're not getting hit by these things. For this guy up here, this turtle dude, if you're in this little corner like this, <coughs> he can't hit you. If you're at the very, very front of the boat, so just make sure you're, you're good to go and just aim towards and kill him. Um, to make sure that not as many ghosts spawn, I sit at the back of the boat, so I'm farther away from the spawn point until right about here, and then I come forward and uh, I don't have to worry about as many ghosts spawning. Then you want to start aiming towards this to shoot it as quickly as possible, uh, so that way it'll be broken by the time you're good to go. <clears throat> Otherwise, just follow this exactly. Come up here and shoot through this, and make sure you don't break anything that you don't need to break. Come over here to the left side, and burn through this left side one. So you have the path. Burn through the one to the left where the fire guy is standing. And that is the quickest way to do that, like the quickest movement through it. Uh, and... Uh, while you're learning it, uh, it can seem a little intimidating if you need to take the time to make sure you don't get hit. It, it's perfectly acceptable. You don't need to play absolutely perfect while you're just learning the game and just starting out. Nobody's nobody's gonna make fun of you or think little of you because you can't do something. Um, here, if you have a golden charm, there's uh, something you can do. It's kind of advanced. Um, I don't think I'm going to go over it because uh, it doesn't save a whole lot of time. Um, so again, it's one of those things where if you're, you're feeling you're feeling up to snuff and you, you want to, you, you're thinking you need to go a little bit faster, start watching some runs um, and, uh, you know, just uh, kind of mimic it. It's, it's not It's not too bad. 
coming up here you want to pre-fire the one of the corners the left or the right until it's dead and then you want until it's broken rather and you want to come over here to this corner uh, i come over to the corner so that way i have the most time to shoot the guy the ghost spawn from the right uh, if you want you can shoot from here and just kind of turn like this to kill it uh, and then awesome uh, that's something you have to worry about um uh, the hitboxes on these ghosts are awful, and the frame rate in this world is very bad. So you have to make, really make sure that the ghost is dead before you move towards it. Otherwise, you're good to go. And just come over here to complete and collect the key. For this level, uh, there's not too much to it. Again, it's just another mini game. <clears throat> um, worth noting, after roosters explode, uh, well, again, start the, uh, pump the pause menu, restart the level, and skip the cutscene at the very beginning of it. Um, worth noting, after roosters die, I believe it's, I believe it's three seconds, three to five seconds. Uh, and the more you do the mini game, you'll get the feel down for it. Um, before the next set spawns. So what I always do is after they blow up, I uh, I take very aggressive paths uh, for a, a couple of seconds, and I make sure that I'm away from where the roosters can spawn um, when I feel like they're about to start spawning again. Uh, also, you don't need to, and I actually don't recommend just mashing the square button the entire time here. Uh, if there's no chickens around you, just wait and try to time it when you come up to, to, to chickens. Uh, and when you're coming around corners, remember that when you're turning, you can extend or uh, shorten Sly's Kane's hitbox, uh, depending on which way Sly's Kane is going, to the left or to the right, and then depending on whether you're turning with that. So be careful with that, because you can oftentimes uh, snipe the roosters through the little like gumbo machine, or not the gumbo machine, the little like pots of gumbo, or like corn or whatever the other thing is, uh, and take damage and often feel like you didn't do anything wrong, when in reality you did, and uh, hit the rooster without intending to. Now this is a very, very, very bad chickens. <laughs> uh, again with the mini games. Oftentimes, uh, you just kind of have to deal with what you're given. Uh, you can try to make do, or you can make do. And, you know, go as, do, do the best you can with what, what you have, but you know, sometimes things just don't 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 add up. Now, this key animation skip can be kind of hard. Um, you can just jump into it and pause, uh, or you can do what I do. You can get up close, or you can you can jump and swing your cane into it, or you can be really careful, get really close, jump. And then uh, press square when you're right next to it, and you should be able to get it every time. If you don't feel comfortable with that, or you had a charm and you lost your charm, you can load the game and then jump into the key. And then when you load in, you'll just exit level. You do not want to view map, you want to exit level. Now, I'm going to go get a charm. So I can show what this looks like with a charm. Because you should always have a charm coming into Ruby. If you don't have a charm, don't worry, you don't need it. Um, but you should always have one. But if you don't have a charm when you leave down home cooking, uh, it's not faster to go and get a charm. I'm only doing that for... Uh, demonstrative purposes. Here you want to just make sure you wait so you have a proper lineup. Um, just jump down to here. Land on this and you're, you're good to go. So I totally forgot to split for chickens, so whatever. I split when I collect the key for chickens, not when I leave the level. Now this cutscene, uh, you can only skip this cutscene, you can only reset the game to skip this cutscene on uh, backwards compatible PlayStation 3s. 
on the pl slim PlayStation 2, the fat PlayStation 2, and I believe the collection, it is slower to reset to skip this cutscene. It only lasts uh, 50 seconds, and it's 50 seconds exactly. So it barely saves any time uh, on backwards compatible PlayStation 3s. This first part, um, you can do it very quickly. Uh, when you when you load in, uh, you can hold up right on the analog stick and mash X to get to this first tooth. Uh, and then from there, you can make all the one cycles. Um, I'm just going to show this off kind of a, a slower way, where you just kind of wait for everything. If you think, odds are, if you, if you feel comfortable that you can make this cycle, you should be able to make it. <clears throat> and don't worry, we have to burn this charm anyway. So if you lose the charm during that section, don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, this skip is, is really finicky. Like, it's not finicky, but it's really hard. So you want to make sure you double jump towards uh, this like upper portion of the vine. Like, you want to try to land right around here. And then as soon as you land on that part... Uh, you want to jump up right and then hold up left and mash the jump button until so you get about here and, and you sh you, you're you good to go you don't have to keep jumping anymore um, that's gonna take time and it's is very it, it's really hard but I, I highly recommend learning it um, and going for it because it saves so much time um, and once you get to this part, it's not too bad. Uh, you just drop down here, and you double jump to this thing. This little, like, tree branch. Um, <coughs> and you're good to go from here. You'll just double jump over here towards this, like, spear. And you should land on this invisible this invisible platform. Uh, and once you're here, you want to just slope jump. Uh, again, holding forward to jump up here to get this ledge grab. And then from here... You want to aim kind of towards like the little rope and jump down to here. Once you're here, you're good to just fall off and lose the charm if you need to. Um, if you don't need to, you can just jump straight away into this water back here and die. So long as you touch this water, even if you don't die in this water, so long as you touch the water behind her, you can then die anywhere and you will always come into the second phase. <coughs> Which from here is basically self-explanatory. You can time these inputs if you would like. Um, I just mash because it's a lot more consistent. I've only dropped an input mashing here once or twice, whereas time trying to time them, I've dropped way more than I care to admit. <laughs> Welcome back, Johnny, as well. I know it was kind of a long time ago. And once you land, you can run up and hit her before she does an attack. So you're, you're good to go there. Hello, Ender. Alright. Now, this part is, is another very hard thing to do, to like, to learn. Um, as soon as you get to this part, you want to wait. Uh, for her tail to slam down, and you can go to the left or to the right or directly forward. It, it doesn't realistically matter. <clears throat> so when her tail to slam down, you want to get as close as you can. Um, and I make sure that Sly is in a running animation, so I, I pause while I'm holding left stick, and then I let go. 
Uh, and then you're going to want to go down to load game or options, load the game, and then after you press X, like, as soon as you press X, you're going to start mashing square, and you should be able to kill her. If the autosave pops up, you know you did it correctly, and you're good to just view map back out, and go back to the hideout. Uh, pressing down three times is the optimal menu movement. If you don't get it, and you have to re if you don't get it, then you have to redo the entire fight. The which sucks, the but it's upon. so much faster than doing the third phase. If you end up doing the third phase, if you don't feel comfortable doing the skip and you have to do the third phase, uh, when you jump down and you land, you want to load the game before you get the last hit on her to skip the cutscene. But when he tried to offer his fireworks to the nobleman, they couldn't see past his shabby clothes and chased him away. Now this level is why we want the charm. Humiliated, the Panda King took revenge on those who shunned him by using the very tools of his art for crime. The Fetish Five recruited him as their demolitions expert, and from then on, his and explosive... Like I said, if you don't have the charm, don't worry about it. It's perfectly, perfectly fine. Firework technique high in the you don't need it. Mountains of Western China. It's just helpful. Because it's faster. Although it does require, if you have the charm, it does require another super jump chain, but it's only four jumps, so it's a lot easier. And there's nothing you really have to worry about hitting on accident or anything. You just you just kind of do it. So it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. Uh, that's why I'm going to be explaining it. Uh, for this first part, uh, just follow follow my movement the way that I do it. You don't have to match it exactly. Make sure you don't get hit by this guard. Um, when I get about right here, it's when I double jump up to this to land on it. Uh, if you need to come up here to line it up easier, you can. From here, I jump directly backwards from my first jump, and then as I do my second jump, I hold down left. Well, I hold I held down left for the first part there on accident, but normally I ledge grab right around here. Well, I guess I can show it to you now that I felt it falling down. And you're good to go. Uh, from here, you can just double jump straight over here and go out of bounds. Uh, make sure you don't get too close to the snow, and you're staying down here on the, the grassy area. If you get too close to the snow, you'll trigger the cutscene that we are going out of bounds to skip. Uh, here you can double jump up here like normal, you get the ledge grab, or you can do a slope jump. Um, when you're out of bounds, the camera is very finicky, and I want to show the actual out of bounds movement, so I'm going to load the game and do all this again. If you fall down, just run like normal. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's not any faster to run out of bounds. It's just safer to run out of bounds. Because those guys, the, the snowball guard, is is very, very, very finicky with its hitbox. So I prefer to stay out of bounds to just avoid them. Once you're up here, just kind of hold like an upright position so the camera changes, and then once you can see Sly, you should be good to go. Um, you don't have to jump over here, or you can jump over there, but you don't have to. Um, I do, because I find it a little bit easier to, to control Sly, but you don't, you don't have to do that. Uh, and then just fall down like normal. You can also fall down and kill the guard. Um, oh, this this movement's pretty normal. Um, yeah, I recommend, or I don't recommend. Uh, this is how you should be doing it. Um, just land on top of this, and then double jump up here, and let's grab this, and then just jump down to here. If you're quick enough, you can skip cycles here, but skipping cycles is a very advanced technique, uh, and requires a lot of knowledge of the game, and requires a lot of you know, being able to play fast and play consistent, so I'm not going to kind of explain the cycles you can skip and whatnot, just kind of learn and mess around with it as you get better. Here you can double jump and hit this firework, or you can just walk around, it doesn't matter. When you land on this trampoline, you don't have to jump, it will give you enough height. Uh, here you want to walk up and keep Sly positioned behind this, so the guard, or positioned behind the statue, so the guard doesn't see you. And then you're going to just jump around to the right and hit him. 
Uh, and now we're gonna hit these fireworks early. So you can do this one of two ways. You can jump up on this, and you can double jump up and hit it. Or you can come up here and you can slope jump up this and hit it. I think landing on the little lamp is faster, but it's also a little bit finicky, so do whichever one feels more comfortable to you. And now here's what we need the charm for. Um, you're gonna get to this corner, and this is where you're gonna start your super jump chain. You're gonna jump to here, and you're gonna jump over to here, and you're gonna make sure you don't get too close to the gate. If you get too close to the gate, you're gonna trigger a cutscene. Uh, you just wanna just keep coming over here. I'm gonna make sure you don't mess up and hit this bottle. If you swing too late, Sly will try to hit the bottle, and you can mess up and lose your super jump chain. Um, so here's what it looks like all together. Well, you don't ledge grab, but otherwise you're fine. Now, you might be thinking, alright, well I'm good to go, um, I can just continue on, uh, but you're actually not. We still need the key. Just because we can skip the level doesn't mean that we don't need to go back and collect the key. <coughs> so what we're going to do is, and this is, um, alright, what we're going to do is just follow my movement exactly here. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable jumping over this tree, you can just go around it. Um, in fact, I'm just going to show you how to go around it. Just go around it and come over to here. I'm not, not even going to show the other the other way. It's It doesn't save enough time to be relevant. So get up here. Uh, I jump and hit, and I jump and swing, and then load. You don't have to do that. You can just get up here, swing, and then press pause. Um, but it is a little bit finickier. Uh, I'm going to mess this up. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna, gonna just watch the key. Um, if you jump and attack into it, uh, it's a lot easier to pause and you get the view map. If the autosave pops up, uh, when the pause menu is up, you can just view map and view map straight straight away up to here. Uh, if not, then you have to run back through the level like normal, like casually. If you didn't do the the strat, and you'll uh, you'll just play the level like casually, like normal. Um, when you view map up to here, the reason why we do that is because we're already up here. Uh, we're already good to go, we can just run straight away to the level. If you didn't get to do that, you didn't have the charm or whatever, you just don't feel comfortable, and you're down here, you want to load the game when you're here. <clears throat> you want to be careful not to mash X a whole bunch during this fade out, or you'll get a weird like launch glitch. So just, just load the game and, and just wait until you spawned in and then run over here. And come over here to King of the Hill. And I forgot to split, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, here, um, Nash pause. As soon as it comes up, come down here to load the game. And you're good to go. Uh, I believe, again, on um, on the collection, you have to view map uh, back to the hideout to skip that cutscene. <coughs> and then come back. Make sure you shoot that firework early. Uh, and then pre-fire all the guards where they spawn at. Again, just like the last time if you're playing on the collection. Um, <clears throat> it'll take time. So just just learn where they're coming from. Learn where you can and can't shoot them from. Where they spawn at, things like that. <coughs> uh, excuse me. That can be a little bit tricky. Um, <clears throat> you want to try to kill those guards uh, as quickly as possible, because if Murray runs back too far, uh, there's a chance he can walk too far and slide off and die, uh, and that's sad when that happens. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. 
And again, with this part, don't rush yourself. You have way more, way more time to hit these guards than you feel like you should. So just pace yourself. Make sure you're, you're, you're not missing. If you need to shoot a bunch, don't hesitate to shoot a bunch. It's all good. This level is very, <clears throat> is very difficult. When you're learning the game, this is going to be one of the hardest levels to learn. So you're going to wait for this guard, uh, his light to go down. If you have the cycle, you're, you're good to go. <coughs> I think it's fine. Uh, you want to run up like normal and just kind of follow my movement. Um, there are two ways to skip this guard. Um, I'll show both of them, and then I'll show just like I'll show the casual way first, and then I'll load. Or I'll, I'll, I'll show all three. Uh, so this is the first way. Oops. I'll just run away so he he, he resets. Uh, if you come through this left window, you'll want to do this way. So I'll wait until he gets back to his normal position. You want to get on top of? Oh my god! I don't like this way. It's really fitting. I I hate this way. Um, I honestly recommend it's not doing it this way. But if you want to do it, I'm, I'm gonna show it off. So you want to land up here, and you want to jump out and around, and then run over and kill this guard. The way I do it, and I think I'm the only person that does it this way. Um, and both of these ways are the exact same time save. There's it's literally just preference. Uh, you want to run up, and when you get to this guard's like light, you want to double jump over it. And then when you land here, you want to press circle, um, so you can duck down, and his attack will either go over you or it'll hit the ground, and you just double jump over and hit him. Uh, and then obviously the other way to do it, um, the easier way, the casual way, is to just get on here and, and do the level the normal way. Just hold circle and, and slide through. Um, here you're going to be on a cycle. Um, I'm not going to explain the cycle because there's no reason to try to go for it when you're just learning the game. Um, again, it will just come naturally as you're playing getting better. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure this guard... And you want to go on the opposite side of where this guard's light is. And you want to come up here and you want to make sure that this guard's light is on the far right. Like it's, it's going back over. You want to get up to here, and when you're here, you're gonna jump and push slightly forward so that you can land on this railing. And when you land on the railing, you're then going to uh, jump and then do a slightly delayed jump, a uh, slightly delayed double jump, to land or to ledge grab onto his railing. Once you get up here, you're just gonna jump up and attack him, and you're good to go. Um, that's really hard to do when you're when you're just starting out. Uh, and if you can't do it, and you're just having so much trouble with it, um, you're losing a bunch of time to it, don't feel bad for just running through the level like normal. Um, if you have like like if you have a charm, like what I what I would say and what I what I did for a lot of like harder stuff in the game uh, that I probably shouldn't have been learning, uh, and then even for some of this easier stuff, is if I had a charm, I would give it an attempt. And if I messed it up, when I got back to where I was at normally, I would just do the level the casual way. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with giving things that you're learning and you're still practicing one shot uh, in a run. Um, like that. It, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, here you can make this double jump. If you don't feel comfortable with it, just jump onto the tree and you're good to go. Uh, this guy, just make sure you double jump over his light instead of pressing circle. It's much faster and you're good to go. Here, you want to double jump onto this rope. Um, again, here, uh, this can be hard. Um, you want to get up to here and double jump onto this. And I see so many people not know how to do this properly. 
I, I see way too many times people come up here, they get up here, and they try to land on this one, and they can never ledge grab it. And that's because the railing is going away from you. Not only are you further away because the, the rail you're standing on is farther away, but where you're trying to land on is too far away. Or else if people come up here and they'll try to cut back, and they won't have enough height to get it. It's because you're going too far up here. I see time and time again, and it, it makes me sad that people don't know how to do this properly. So... You come up here to this 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 one right here. So, if you're counting from the ledge, or if you're counting from the little like cr the crook in the the rail, one, two, three, four, five. It's so the fifth one up. You know, double jump. Like you can single jump onto the rail, uh, which is what I do. But you can also double jump to make it a little bit easier. And uh, you don't have to turn yourself. You can do this, and you just double jump straight up. And then after you do your double jump, you push left, and you'll ledge grab every single time every single time if you do it like this well unless you mess up like that and and like that wow okay come on there we go I'm not waiting on my second jump. you have to wait on your second jump just a little bit but every time perfectly fine once you get up here double jump and press circle to get on this uh, and you're good to go you can do this casually and just walk uh, you don't have to you can double jump and then press circle in the air like we did earlier, and you're fine. Um, climb along this rail, and uh, if you can't do this, just do the level casually, it's fine. Because um, this is kind of difficult, but when you get on this, you want to jump off of it and get up to here so you ledge grab, and then you tap jump up. Now you can tap jump and then hold back a slight bit if you want to make it a little bit easier. And then you're gonna jump out and around and get up here to ledge grab on this. Uh, it's not too terribly bad. Once you've practiced it a couple of times, it'll it'll come down a little bit natu more naturally to you. Um, here, you don't have to do this the casual way. Just jump and just fall straight down, and you'll be fine. Break this. Uh, don't be too close when you break that, or you'll hit the you'll hit the uh, the key case and the alarm. Uh, and then there's a very 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 rare soft lock you can get here where you'll break the ball and the key will be in your hand and you'll auto save and you'll, you'll have to reset your console um, but otherwise just go like normal from here you're just gonna run across um, worth noting don't go too far to the right if you go too far to the right you'll trigger a cutscene with Bentley so just kinda and follow my movement there. Uh, here, if you need the coins, if you're at about, if you're at, if you're doing it like optimally or whatever, and you're just kind of like watching to kind of like get brushed up on a trick or two, um, and it should be about 60 to 65 coins here. Um, you can collect these coins. If you're over 70, you don't need to, but I'd still recommend it. It's always easier to avoid coins than it is to try to go out of your way to get them. Uh, you can jump and do this, or you can just jump down here, jump you know, through it or whatever. It doesn't matter. Do whichever one you want to do. Um, there's two ways to do this. Uh, oh god. I'm so sorry about that. Go away, Windows. I don't care. About your stupid update. Apologies. Um, so there's, there's two ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to explain the, the much easier way and the way we all do it. Um, I don't think a single person does it the other way anymore. Uh, what you do is, what you're going to do is you're going to run and you're going to kind of jump out towards the left and then press circle after you've done your second jump. You want to make sure you don't do it too early, because if you do and you're too close to this one, you'll, you'll hit this hook, and you, you don't want that. So you want to do that, you want to hold up on the control stick all the way until you get to the height of Sly's little, like, latched on swingy pose, if that makes sense. And then after you do that, you're going to hold back right on the left analog stick, and you're going to double jump uh, quickly up uh, onto the thing, and you should ledge grab. If you get a bunch of momentum like that, you won't ledge grab, and you can just clear it like normal. 
Um, and you want to hit this and jump onto it. And then jump over to here and land on this. Now, you can skip this guard. But again, it's just a cycle that comes down to feel. Um, so I'm just going to tell you to just land down here and kill him. Uh, you can also collect these coins then if you need to. Don't get roundhouse kicked by the guard. <clears throat> I do not recommend that. So just fall down, kill the guard. Don't get kicked in the face, <laughs> kill this guard. And then uh, the quick way to do this is to double jump and hit while you're falling. If you need to, just hit and then double jump. Uh, make sure you wait to double jump until after it's started rising. Otherwise, the guard will spot you and he will hit you through the, uh, the ground. Uh, here, single jump onto this, uh, and then double jump and latch onto this. Um, it's faster than just doing this, uh, because, well, actually, you can't just do that. So you have to hit this and then climb up a little bit. So just, just do this. <clears throat> it's not that bad. It looks like it's hard, but it's really not. Uh, normally what I do is when I collect this coin, I know that I'm safe to double jump. And then from here, it's just mainly just following... Sam Rao, there's, there's not too much else to explain. Uh, you don't have to do that that quickly, you can just walk around like normal. Um, here, uh, you can do this and then immediately jump off if you would like. If you want the coins, you can walk up them like normal. Uh, you can clear this with a single jump. And then, about halfway through, you can run through and trigger the alarm and you're fine. Uh, you don't have to break it, you can just come up here and finish the level like normal. Now this out of bounds is this out of bounds is is extremely tricky, um, and if you're not feeling comfortable with it, you don't have to do it. But I highly recommend doing it because if you do the level the casual way, you have to watch two cutscenes, and they're both really slow. So I would recommend learning this um, and not doing it the casual way. So what I do is I get Sly lined up with this, and then I. I like, like where did this uh, where this little bottom like this darker like line in the wood is? I line up Sly on it, and then because uh, it should be about halfway through with this, and I turn him towards this way, and I double jump and land here. And then there's two ways you can do this here. There's the everyone else's way, and then there's the my way. <laughs> um, everybody else double jumps up to here. Everybody else, pardon me, uh, if you die, just let yourself die, you're good to go. Otherwise, uh, make sure, or, so, okay, anyway, if you die, just let the death animation play out, don't load the game, it's slower. So, get here, and everybody else double jumps up to here. Now, I find this to be very, very, very hard. I don't know why, I just can't do it. Um... So I found my own way to do this, so I didn't have to do this. And you tap jump up here, and then you just jump out of bounds. The way I do it, and the way I'm honestly going to recommend you to do it, even though everybody else does it the other way, is to just land here, and then just double jump over here. Um, you can either land up here like this and not get a ledge grab and just jump up, or you can get a ledge grab, which is much easier to get, and then you can just jump up and just jump up out of bounds. I've never had a problem doing it my way since I started doing it my way. I've not once messed up any of this movement and like fallen out of bounds. Whereas whenever I used to always try to do it this way, I would always mess it up. I wouldn't get it and I'd have to reset it or I would miss it and fall out of bounds and die. So I, I honestly just, I just recommend just doing this. It's so much easier. So, so much easier. From here, um... Just double jump over here. I I think you can walk this. Yeah, you, you, well, no, you can't. Okay. So yeah, so double jump over to the wall. <laughs> I see Rick. Uh, double jump over to the wall. And you should land uh, a little bit on top of it on this invisible barrier. And you're just going to follow it straight away. It's about right here. And here you're just going to cut to the right a little bit. And once you're here, you're just going to cut back again to the right and fall down here. 
And once you're here, once you're right about here, you should fall down. Once you fall down, it's imperative that you double jump over to here. Because if you don't and you just fall down, you'll land on the vehicle and you'll shoot your way through the door and it's really, really slow. So just double jump over it and you're good. If you mess it up like this, you know, you'll be fine. You can let you grab the door and you can just fall down and walk into the trigger like normal. Otherwise, you should just double jump straight into the trigger. Now this trick is... This trick is dumb. Don't let this trick discourage you from running the game. Nobody likes this trick, and everybody has to deal with it. Unless you're playing on the collection. If you're playing on the collection, you cannot do this trick, and you have to play the level casually. And, at the very end of the level, you have to worry about a random hard lock. And since not very many people run in the collection, we don't really know what makes the hard lock tick. So it just kind of happens. Um, so what you're going to do is... I don't honestly think that shooting the door matters too much. But it does seem to be a little bit more consistent when you shoot the door twice. So shoot it twice as you're coming up. And... <sighs> shut up, Bentley. Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't want to talk over Bentley. Oh my god. This is why we skip all the cutscenes, because Bentley doesn't know how to shut up. <laughs> uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to position Sly like this. Uh, you can position him however you want, but I recommend doing it like this. I've found it to be more consistent like this. It could just, it should, in theory, it's basically just a placebo effect, but whatever. And you're going to hold up left, so you're kind of pushing Sly into the corner. And then you're just going to start spinning. <laughs> You're just going to start spinning in a circle, making sure you don't shoot. Um, and eventually you'll get popped up out of bounds. Now, you don't want to go too far, this too far to the left, or you'll fall out of bounds and you'll soft lock. Or you'll hard lock. Yeah, soft lock, because you can load the game and you'll be fine. You don't have to do spinning again. You don't want to go too far straight, because the same thing will happen. And you don't want to go too far directly right, or that'll happen as well. So you want to kind of hold like upright. If your slide is right on here, you should be good. And just keep going that way, and the camera should change, and you'll be back to here. Uh, and you'll just want to fall down before you get to the center area. You can accidentally fall down and end up behind here, and if you do, you're soft locked. So you have to load the game to get back, because you can't get, you can't like ramp back over here and, and just like this. Otherwise, you just come up here, shoot this, and you're good to go. Like I said, on the collection, sometimes you can just hard lock uh, at the very end there when the, the key falls down. I I don't know what makes it tick. I'm yeah. Um, here, uh, we're just gonna go over here to this level. If you want, you can jump on this. You can try to jump on this and then jump over the tree. Um, it is a little bit faster, but it's kind of sketchy. Um, so what I honestly recommend doing. It's just giving it a shot while you're learning it. Uh, it doesn't save too much time, but you know, just just like jump at it. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, oh whatever, I fell down. Just just come over here and climb up. It doesn't, it doesn't save enough time to be like upset about it. Just be like, oh whatever, I lost it. You know, who cares? It's all good. Uh, from here, if you need, like, you want to check your coins. Um, I'm at 81. Because my coins or whatever are weird and whatnot. You don't want to like check your coins. You want to just like collect the first one and then see where you're at, and if you need to collect the rest of these, you can. Um, then we get to go, whatever. Uh, you want to make sure, if you're trying to collect the charm in this level, that you collect it after a... Uh, you want to make sure you don't collect it before you die. We're going to do a death abuse, and you want to make sure you don't get the charm before that. Yes. Yes, it is. Ender. Um, so yeah. From here, uh, once this is all the way up, you want to make sure it's all the way up, you can jump to the corner. Uh, you can double jump up to the corner, like this, and just tap jump up, and you'll be fine. If you can't get that down, um, what I did for the longest time is I got up here, and I just did it like this. It's... 
very, very easy to do, and you're good to go. Uh, now, 90% of this ceiling, this, this roof, uh, rooftop, has a cutscene trigger on it. So what you're gonna do is you want to make sure you stay about a slice model away from that, and just kind of jump over here. If you want to get a bunch of ledge grabs and like ledge grab jump on it, you can. Uh, once you're right here, you're good to just jump and, and latch onto the hook. Uh, if you, worth noting, I guess worth noting, uh, if you want to guarantee you have a charm for the end game. You can come down here and collect this charm. Come down here and collect this charm. And what you want to do is now that you have have it collected, you want to save your game. You want to, you want to make sure you save your game. Now what this will do is it the, the most recent saved game says you have a charm. So now I'm going to jump on the spire point and we're going to double jump over the second spire point because uh, you can make that. It's very easy. It's very, very difficult to mess that up. Um, just jump up here and hit this. <laughs> Wait for it to fall down. And you're good to go. Uh, I kill that guard. You don't really have to. Uh, I do it just because. Um, you can also make that. Uh, if you're worried about that, you can just jump down and jump up here. It's very easy. I want to hit both of those fireworks. Jump over here and hit this firework while you're falling down. Uh, you're good to go. <clears throat> and here we're going to be doing uh, a sequence break where we are going to jump up on top of this safe. And we're going to jump up to like the top right of this and swing our cane. And uh, we'll hit the checkpoint and trigger it. If you cannot do that, if you just can't do that and you have the charm, you can get slide to about right here and just jump around. Well, if you jump around and get all the way on the outside, Sly will pop up and over, and he'll hit the checkpoint that way. But I recommend just learning this. It's not that bad. Um, and you're good to go. Now, if you have the charm, you have to burn it, and then after you burn it, then you just die. And make sure you have a life to do this. <laughs> I've, I've done that before. And you're good to just complete the level like normal. Hit both of these and wait for Carmelina to shoot. You can break this for extra coins if you need them. Um, you can make all of these jumps with just a single jump. <clears throat> if you don't feel comfortable doing that, double jumping is perfectly fine. And here, once you get to about right here, uh, you want to double jump and kind of have your control stick position such that you're aiming towards the coin. Um, and, well, I, I paused. Um, and you can land on this, and you can jump up here and skip and skip doing that by mashing X a bunch while you're doing it. If you can't do that, there's nothing wrong with just breaking these like normal. It's not that slow, and you're, and you're good to go. Um, Carmelita can snipe these fireworks if you're extremely unlucky, and if she does, it's a hard lock or it's a soft lock, and you have to load the game, or when well, you have to load the game, you have to die to restart at the checkpoint to respawn them. Otherwise, you're you're fine. Now. If you came into the level with the charm, or you got that charm to guarantee it, and you saved the game, you have to load the game, and then collect the key to get your charm back. Otherwise, if you just have a charm on your back already, like you got it after you death abused by breaking that little statue to get the coins, or breaking the rocks to get the coins, then you can just hit it and exit level. But for the sake of this run, we got the charm and we saved, so we're going to load the game, swing the can to get our charm, or get our key, and then we're going to exit level when we load back in. And we, as you see, we have the charm that we collected throughout the level. You do not have to collect the charm and then like do something weird where you have to like reload the area, like save and then reload the area. You don't have to do that. Just once you have the charm on your back then you can save the game and you're fine. You can go all the way to the end, load the game, and collect the key. From here, we're just going to run down here. And, well, don't... Okay, that is that is something that I forgot about. You don't want to walk off that. You want to make sure you jump off of that. For whatever reason, 
that has a property where if you walk off of it, you slide and you lose all control, and you can't swing your cane, you can't jump, you can't do anything, and you will land, and this guard will kill you. I've had it happen to me on really solid attempts before, um, before I knew what was causing that, and it's, it is very, very frustrating. So make sure you jump off of it, and then walk into the, the trigger for this race. Now, no one is going to be upset at you if you cannot do race skip. Race skip is very, very difficult, and I would honestly consider it an advanced trick, but because it saves so much time, I'm going to show it off, even in a beginner's kind of guide, um, simply because of how much time it saves. But if you have to do the race, just do the race. What I would always do is I would give it one or two tries and then just do the race. I would give it one or two tries, restart the level, and then do the race. Then you come down here, you're going to turn this corner, you're going to collect the boost. Now, you can just do this with one boost, and it's fine. What I recommend doing, especially if you're a new runner, is to drive up over this hill to spawn a second boost and getting it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to use this kind of like a guide to line yourself up and then once you get to the edge of it right here you're going to turn and kind of go up left and you're going to aim for right about here. And all this is just timing. Uh, I can't really explain it extremely well. You just kind of have to do it and learn your own way to to do it and how you want to how you want to mess with it because there's a, there's numerous ways to do this just like I've said many times before um, there's many ways to do these things so just do whatever feels comfortable for you um, so to just kind of show it all off in one, one kind of go uh, the reason why I guess the reason why you want to get the second boost is there will be times where you will have the correct angle to make it but you just don't have enough distance, and that second boost can kind of just push you over the edge, and you're good to go. Now, I've been running this game for a year, and I still have trouble with this. So don't feel discouraged if you can't get it. Like I said, just do the race. It's perfectly acceptable to just do the race. If you, if you just need to do it, it's fine. See, like, right there, I wasn't going to make that Well, I could have made that one, but it would have been sketchy. So that's why I collect the second boost, to guarantee that I get it. Um, otherwise, you just run over here. And what I do, and I do this because it has always worked for me. Every single time. I've seen times where people will drive over here, and they won't pause the game when Murray gets out of the van, and he'll get stuck on the van, he'll walk, he'll miss the key, something will happen, and there's nothing they can, like, they, they, like, they load the game or whatever because they feel like that. Don't do any of that. Please don't do any of that. There's Once you get risk skip, there is no reason to not... You shouldn't do it again. You're fine. As soon as you drive over here to this key, and you see Murray get out of the van, Murray has to get out of the van. You have to make sure he gets out of the van. But once he is out of the van, you can pause and just restart the race. And you will always, every single time, 100% of the time, he will collect the key and you can just exit level. So please, 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 if you are doing race skip and you get it, drive over there, make sure Murray gets out of the van, and when he does, pause the game and restart the level, or restart the race. Don't wait and try to let him collect the key himself. Not only is it not faster, because you have to listen to and watch the key animation, not only is it slower to just do that, but there's also that chance that you can get softlocked and have to do the skip again. So please, just... Please. <laughs> I've seen it happen way too many times to way too many runners to not stress that enough. Once you've done that, um come over here and unlock the fireworks like normal. 
You have to swing the cane to ignite them, and then you have to jump and press circle to latch onto them, otherwise you won't latch onto them. Now, Panda King's cutscene, even though he talks very slow, there isn't too much dialogue here. So it's only faster to reset the console to skip this cutscene on PS2 Slim, backwards compatible PlayStation 3, and the HD Collection. Fat PS3s cannot skip this cutscene. And like I said, for any of the bosses earlier from Relia, I kind of glossed over this for Ruby and Mugshot. Um, general rule of thumb is wait a second after you see the autosave logo pop up and you'll, you'll be fine. Here, Panda King has three attacks. While you're running up to him, he only has the one, so just kind of make sure you don't get hit. Up here, he has three attacks. Fiery Wheel, where he does a circle underneath him. Uh, if you jump to avoid that, and you just want to mash at square to hit him a bunch while you're waiting for these. Um, Booming Chop, where he attacks just the left side, which he has not shown yet. There we go. You just walk to the right to avoid it. And then, uh, I believe it's called Palms of Thunder, where you just stand right in the middle to hit him. Now, when he's pushing you back like this, um, once he's pushed you back, and while you're in the air, you want to mash circle, uh, so that way you can land as quickly as possible. If you do a little hop before it, sometimes you can land a little bit closer than normal. Uh, what you want to do here is you want to count your hits for the last 10. Now, if you're mashing square, you can hit him one extra time. Uh, it doesn't save any time, because you still have to hit him ten times regardless. But you can get a hit onto him, which I did. So now, even though I've only hit him three times since I've been up here this time, I've technically counted, I've technically hit him four, because I hit him once before I got pushed back. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten puts him into this state. And here is where you want to load the game to get the final hit on him. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, it's not like super advanced. Uh, you can pause on the 7th or the 8th hit, um, or the 8th or the 7th hit, if you are if you know you, can, you don't have to jump, um, and then load the game and then get the final remaining hits that way. Otherwise, just wait until the last hit to guarantee that you get it, the cutscene skip. From here, you're going to press down twice, because that's the optimal movement to the hideout. And we're going to go and move on to Clockworks World. Okay, partner. Now, if you've been, if you were paying attention at the very, very beginning, we and you were running on the collection, in uh, over what this is the only cutscene you cannot reset the game to skip, to uh, because it's not faster. In the four parts uh, of the otherwise, all the other animations, to my knowledge, all of the other uh, animated cutscenes like this are faster to skip on the collection. We cannot skip these on the PlayStation 2 disc of the game, uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but we can't. <clears throat> when this cutscene is over, you want to be holding down square, because you have to shoot the gate to unlock the way forward, and you can do that while direct during the fade in. Also, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, this level is an auto scroller, there's nothing you can do to speed it up, so just shoot everything, hold down square the whole time and shoot it. <coughs> Uh, you can lose time in this section, though. The section with the the birds, um, the the Robo Falcons, whatever they're called. Um, if you don't kill them fast enough, the van will stop. So make sure you you you're focusing on killing them quickly enough. Um, you can pre-fire the first bird in every section, um, but that just takes kind of time to learn it. Uh, this this area is very hard, and believe it or not, is is a run killer when you're learning the game. Uh, it, it, it is very sad um, when you lose a run here, but it's very possible. And many people before you have, so don't don't like feel like, you know, you're you're just the worst person in the world or whatever because you can't you do that it's it's hard. It is very hard. I have seen top runners die here and I myself have died here many times. 
even on our, you know, high level, one of the, you know, the, the best players in the world, blah, 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 you know, our, our fancy pants runs, e even we lose runs to here every now and then. Specifically this section. This section is very hard, but I do, as you see where I'm kind of aiming at and spinning in a circle, all of the birds have to fly through here. Every single bird has to fly through here. Um, it doesn't matter where they are, so or like where they spawn in at, where they go. All of them fly through this section, so as so long as you're in that general area and shooting and doing that like little spinning circle that I am and then kind of adjusting as, as you need to, but always going back to that circle method, you should never run into any problems. Hello crayons. Uh, this is another mini game that's kind of janky. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's really awful. Um, what I recommend doing is doing something that is called the claw method uh, of holding your controller. Uh, if you were kind of I guess a, a hardcore gamer, and I say hardcore in quotes, um, you. Uh, you, you know what this is, but if you don't, uh, it's where you use your right index finger to press uh, the face buttons on your controller, um, or I guess if you really want to get weird, you can even use your left index finger, uh, but you want to use them to press the face buttons. Uh, in this case, you're going to be pressing square to push the bumper on the forward of the van, which you use to knock the, uh, the little magma slugs off back into the magma. You can also use it to extend your reach and hit uh, the computers faster. And then you're going to be using your right analog st or your right thumb to move the right analog stick, to move the camera, and the left analog stick to drive around. Um, this mini game is very heavily uh, RNG based, just like the rest of them. Um, but you can. This is another one where you can kind of finagle your way and you know work with the best of what you get, and you can kind of get somewhat consistent times. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's it's just random. One thing to note that's kind of, I guess, an advanced technique, uh, these slugs only have two ways to enter. They have a way to enter on the right side and the left side. So if you have a chance, if you like, if you don't have to go out of your way to do it, um, you can see like the kind of like middle areas, of them, like you can see where like there's that side over there by the door and there's this side over here by the entrance. You want to make sure, if you have the opportunity to, that you knock them out of the ring as far away from these areas as you can, because that will make them take the longest path back. Whereas these guys, since I'm hitting them really close, they'll they'll come right back over. But this dude will take forever. You see, this guy's already back. But if you look over there, you should be just now seeing that slug come back up. And that's just something to kind of think of in the back of your head. Um, you always want to make sure you're moving the camera. Always, always, always be moving the camera, making sure you know where you need to be looking for, or where you need to be looking at. Um, so that way you can figure out where the most computers are, where they're going so you don't go over there and get a computer sniped from you. Uh, I have forced a habit where I, anytime I get up to a computer, I always press square. You don't have to do that. I just do it to, I guess, because it's just stuck in my head and kind of makes it less monotonous. And if you can, when you collect the 60th computer, make sure you're not really close to these like little rails. You're kind of closer to the center. Um, don't waste time trying to line this up. But if you can, go for it, because this is going to happen. You're going to get kind of stuck here, and it's going to take forever, and you know, nobody wants that. Um, here, as soon as we get in, you're going to mash to start to load the game. And then as soon as you load the game, we are going to try to make a cycle. So I want you to follow the exact way that I do this to a T, basically. Just do it the exact way that I do it, as quickly as I do it. <laughs> what I meant to say was, don't do what I did, because that is incorrect. 
if you have to load the game and you haven't saved having skipped the cutscene, you'll have to load it again. That is what that should look like. Now that's not hard, and that's the only cycle that we're making. But I wanted to stress that enough because it is very simple to just mess that up and get hit by that lightning pool and lose your, your charm and, and you're sad. From here, you can kind of skip these if you want to you know, do a little bit extra and whatnot. Um, from here, there are two ways... There's three ways to do this ending part. There's the stupid way, which I'm not going to show you. There's the way everybody else does it. And then there's my way. <laughs> um, the way everybody else does it is they get up here and they do this. Kind of like how we do the thing in Flaming Temple of Flame. And then once they get out of here, they jump down over to here. And the reason why I don't like this is you have to land on the rail. If you don't land on the rail, you don't, you, you can't get up to it. So once again, I'm going to suggest my way of doing it. <laughs> because I find it to be a million times easier than what everybody else does. And it doesn't save or lose any time. So what I do is I latch onto it, and then I jump up. And I go back to it and kind of stall myself. Well, I don't stall myself. I just jump away from it and then I press circle again. And as I latch onto it, then I just jump off. And it doesn't matter if you land on the rail or not. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. But it doesn't matter if you land on the rail or not. So long as you get to a certain part. And when, when I do it correct, when I'm not pausing and I'm just doing it, I'll be able to, to do it in one go. But... This is what it should look like, if you do it correctly. Now the reason why I say to do it my way, is you don't have to land on this stupid finicky rail. You can land right- oh, I guess I can't show it because I'm going to get shot by the turret. You can just- you can land right around here, and you're close enough to jump over here that the turrets will close and they won't shoot you. 90% of the time, unless you don't jump quick enough. And when you're trying to land on this rail, it's really stupid and finicky, and if you slide to the right, you get shot, and if you slide to the left, you fall in the lava. You can also get shot down and land in the lava, and you can walk inside the lava, so if you get shot down into it, you, uh, you, you lose your charm, and then you're stuck down there, and you die, so you have to reload and do the entire thing over again, which is just awful. Um, what I recommend doing is, if you've gotten here and you haven't lost your charm yet, uh, when you're just learning the game, I would recommend saving. So that way, you don't have to load the game to get your charm back. Um, and while you're, load while, while you're learning this trick, I'm just going to break this. Um, hi, BZ. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying, if you cannot get this trick, if you just can't seem to get enough height to do it, or you're messing it up, or you land in the cutscene trigger, just do the hack while you're learning it. it. Practice makes perfect with this trick. It is very, very difficult. Um, once you have found a setup for yourself and something that works for you, you should be able to get it with somewhat consistency as you practice it and keep doing it. But it's very, very hard. So if, if you're still learning, don't just try to get it for six minutes and then give up and do the hack. Try it like once or twice, you know, try to get the height, and if you can't get it, just jump into the level and do the hack. Or if you do get it and you mess up the ending and you trigger the cutscene, just just do the hack. The hack isn't super hard. It, and it's honestly as a as a newer runner, you're gonna lose more time trying to get this than you are just doing the hack. Uh, so from there, uh, what you're gonna do is obviously the turret's gonna be here. But you're gonna double jump and you're gonna aim for right here. And as soon as you land on this, the turret is gonna aim to shoot at you. And I aim for the top right portion of the turret, which I'll show um, when when it's up there. I'll show it again. And I double jump into it, and then I get get the launch from it. Uh, but I'll I'll explain all that later. So I double jump up here and land. And then I aim top right with the left analog stick for the top right of the turret, and I double jump into it. And right when I feel like I'm gonna get close enough to the turret to get to get launched, which you'll it'll all make sense in a second when I show it. It's easier to explain it and then show it. Um, I hold up left on the analog stick, uh, 
and then yeah so, so now now we'll just explain it or now we'll show it all in one go and the reason why I saved is now if I've messed up the trick and I've lost my charm or I've died and I need to load the game to get back here quicker I don't have to load the game a second time to re-skip the cutscene <coughs> ah pardon me <coughs> so once again this is what this looks like all the way through and you don't need to blow up the other turret uh, you just need to blow up the, the the alarm. Um, you can also get some extra coins here, like a couple of coins here if you need them. <clears throat> but so anyway, this is what it's all gonna look through. And the top right portion of the turret is this like little eye. I'm gonna I'll try to ledge grab it. This is where I'm trying to aim at. It's right around here. And then once I get close enough to here, I'm up. I'm holding up top left. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be aiming once we get launched for right around here, right around this area. Now you can also get launched and not have to land over here and i'll try it I'll, I'll sit here and i'll try to get as many like launches as i can to show you what you should be doing with each one um but yeah so so here we go and that's a failed launch that's fine then you just land and you just do it again now i have messed this up but i got a really quick launch if you get a really really quick launch you need to kind of pull back on the control stick a little bit because if you land and you hit this little like the center portion of this you're gonna slide off into the cutscene uh, I think I took too much off um, so I think I'm gonna land in the cutscene trigger but I'm still gonna try to end it like normal um, what I do is when I'm trying I'm waiting to land on this I just mash the X button as I'm going to land and then when I'm about to like land and like jump when I finally get the first jump, I kind of I hold to the right and just go around the center. Um, so yeah, here we go. Yeah, and I, I goofed it up. So if this happens and you and you goof it up, just watch the cutscene and just do the hack. Don't don't worry about exiting out and trying to get the skip again when you're just learning the game. There's there's no reason I I seen I've seen multiple newer runners sp spend ten plus minutes on the split trying to get the skip when if they just did the hack. They could have been done in four, and, and there's just there's just no reason. There's just no reason to. It's it's kind of like the race skip thing, where I, I can't stress it enough. It's it's okay to just do this level. It's perfectly fine. So here we go. I'm gonna try to get it properly. And you have a little bit more space to like kind of pull back and save yourself than you think you do, but that'll just come down with with time as you sit here and practice it. And see, I mean, I, I've been running this game forever, and I'm having some trouble. Okay, now this, this is perfect. So I'm gonna land and like I said I'm gonna mash X and jump around. Now, you can get, uh, if you want, I, I just 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 land and jump jump over to this side and jump around. Um, be careful not to hit this like back portion because if you touch this like back portion for whatever reason it triggers the cutscene and also be careful not to jump too far out just like hug the wall, like hug the little like spinny thingy right here, like hug this, but don't like hit the back of it, and you know, and, and you should be good every time. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a really quick launch that doesn't need to land on the thing, so I can show what that looks like. So that way, if you get that kind of a launch, you're not like, oh man, what do I do with this? I I panicked, I landed in the cutscene trigger, and you know, and all that stuff. Now I'm sure that there's a reason for how you get this, and that's how that works. You just kind of fly over it. Um, hitting the back side of this is a lot more of a problem if you uh, if you're doing that one. So make sure you kind of make sure you avoid it, because I've had times where I've gotten this launched, I've hit that, and it's made me very sad. 
uh, otherwise, um, I lost the charm, but it's fine. The only reason why we have the charm in the late game, uh, it's not required, it's literally just as kind of like a safety net to not die in the end game in the run. Um, but anyway, uh, if you have done the hack, <coughs> you will end up on the other side of this. Uh, once you gain control of Sly, break this, and Carmelita will be freed, and then you just run up here, uh, and you're good to go. Now here you want to be mashing start, but not mashing it too hard. And as soon as this menu pops up, the instant you see it up, stop pressing start. Just, if you have to throw your con <laughs> don't actually throw your controller. But uh, if you if they just like you know, yank the, like, you know, pull your hand up, and whatever you have to do to get yourself to stop pressing start, stop pressing start. Uh, if you mash start too much and you close the menu from this point, don't worry about it. Uh, the menu will open up again halfway through the cutscene, and you can load the game to skip it. Uh, what you want to do right now uh, is you're going to come down here to options, you're going to load the game, and you're going to skip the cutscene. <clears throat> now here, there's there's kind of some advanced stuff you can do here. Um, you can shoot all of the top row of the, the glass things before Sly gets up to there, um, but make sure you're protecting Sly first. Um, there's going to be two slugs that appear here at the bottom. If you kill both of them quick enough, you don't have to worry about any of the other slugs in the, like, the bottom right spawning. Like If you can see like underneath Sly, there's like a cave where one spawns. Uh, he won't spawn if you kill the other two quick enough. And you only have to worry about the one spawning in the, the cave to the left. Like, to the left of where, like, the options min like, tab is. Um, so, yeah. So, just, like, shoot this a couple of times and aim down here and kill this first guy. Aim down here and kill the second guy. If you've killed him, when you kill him like that, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything. You can come up here and shoot these. And then you need to come down here and kill this guy. And then this one will spawn, and you want to kill this one. And after that guy is dead, you're, you're good to come up here and shoot these again for a little bit. Um... Once Sly gets to about here, you want to come back, you want to aim for right here to kill this bird, and you want to aim for right here to kill this bird. You cannot damage Sly in this area. Once you're done, you want to come up here and kill these, and if all five of these are broken, Sly can run all the way from start to finish, um, and you won't have to worry about these slugs coming up and hitting him. However, there is like a 1% chance that the slugs will kind of get proxied off of each other, and we'll get launched quick, like far enough to hit Sly, so I always kill them anyway. You don't lose time for killing them, just kill them, please. <laughs> uh, here you want to mash start so you can load the game to skip this cutscene. If you wait too long, the cutscene becomes unskippable, so make sure that you do it quick enough. Uh, here, follow my exact movement if you are new to the game. Do everything the exact way that I do it. If you're not quick enough to make that cycle, don't worry about it, but you should always be quick enough. But if you feel like you have to wait, just go ahead and wait. And take these slow. So when you try to take these fast, that they become a problem. And you don't have to do the cane jumps here, you can just, you just walk like normal, I guess. I, I shouldn't be doing that, I'm just, just, just do it like this. I shouldn't be sh shouldn't be doing it even on accident. And you're good to go. This level is only hard and stressful if you let it be hard and stressful. If you just take your time, you have more than enough time. This is another one of those things kind of like Piranha Lake and um the other level, I, I can't remember what I was talking about. I can't remember which level it was. Where you have more time to 
to, to do the level than you think you do. Uh, once you're up here, um, worth noting on that pipe, you can always, 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 uh, once the first like buzz thingy stops, you can always get the first and the second one. You can always, once the first laser grid is stopped, you can walk through the first one and the second one. You cannot walk through the third one. Make sure you stop before you hit it, otherwise it will shock you and will kill you. Once you're up here, just run to the end of the level and you're good to go. Again, here, you want to be mashing start, because if you wait too long, this cutscene becomes unskippable. So you want to skip it as quickly as possible, not only because it's faster, but because it's good to go. This boss fight, the first phase and the second phase are both auto-scrollers. There's nothing you can do to really speed them up, uh, aside from deal damage quick enough. What I always do is I always hide in this bottom left-hand corner for all four of the phases until he starts shooting. After he starts shooting, I move and then position myself to shoot uh, the part. The first shot goes to his head. The second shot goes to his talons. The third shot will go to his tail feathers. And then the fourth shot will go to his right wing. Provided that you don't miss a cycle on the hit, you don't do enough damage, and you have to redo the same segment, it should always look like that. Now, there's nothing we can do to skip this cutscene, so I'm going to use it to explain something called Purple Rings. Purple Rings are unfortunately a necessary evil in this game. No matter what version of the game you're playing on, there's a chance that the Purple Rings that you go through, that like he shoots at you that you go through, will bounce back from the like the camera like from the back of the screen after you go through them and come back on screen and can either snipe you and you know deal damage to you or kill you if you don't have a charm or you'll go through them and you know you're extremely lucky and you're good to go <clears throat> now these segments are the first one is the left wing the second one is the inner portion of the right wing the third one is his head, and then the fourth one is the far right wing. So you just want to fly through the rings, and then if you have the chance to pre-fire one, if you have the chance to like the pre-fire where they're going to take damage, do so. But since you're just learning the game, don't go out of your way to try to pre-fire. Like right here, we're set up the pre-fire, so I'm going to go ahead and start pre-firing it. And then he'll take in damage before the ring even passes by me. Same thing here, just pre-fire it. And now, once you have gotten to here, once these rings start shooting at you, you no longer have to worry about being purple ringed. It can only happen in the first, second, and third phase. If you're at this point, you can go ahead and you know, have a sigh of relief, you're fine. You can go ahead and you know, maybe get a couple of shots off here, be a little cheeky. And you know, should come back over here and finish them off. You're good to go. Now here, this platforming section, if you try to do it too quickly, will trip you up. Again, you have all the time in the world, don't do this too quickly. You can skip this, it's very easy, that's why I'm showing it to you. You just follow follow the movement there. Always... Now here, this one is kind of weird, because he's going to shoot another laser. So you can either just go for it, like, the, oh, I guess he's not going to shoot another laser. If you're, if you're really quick, he will shoot another laser. Um, if you're slower, you're fine. If he shoots the other laser, uh, just run to the right there, so you don't get hit by it. Now this... Okay, so that's something that can happen. If you're not paying attention, that part will slide down and will trigger the laser. So you have to be very careful to make sure you jump off quick enough. This is a walk platform, so you have to hold down circle. And then what I do to make this easier is you can spire jump on this, and you cannot get hit while you're up here. Now make sure you don't jump up and accidentally hit his wing and get knocked back down, but you can be careful here and land on the spire points and make yourself have 100% safety. And you jump up here, and you just want to make sure you don't get hit by the lasers. And just climb up here, jump up to here, and jump up here. 
and you want to make sure you're not too close to Clockwork's head, because if you're too close to Clockwork's head, when it turns around, he will proxy you back into the lava or the lasers, you will die, and it's awful. It's the worst thing that can possibly happen to you, is to get killed at this part of the run. But once you're here and he's turned around, just go to town, whack him a whole bunch, just show him, show him who's boss, show him who's the real boss of the game, and split on the final hit of Clockwork. To that last and piece of the there you have it. From that is Sly I Cooper and Devious Raccoonus, any percent. Clap ready, here, and you know, and go crazy if you got a sick PB, and you can do whatever you want to do. One by one and, um, my birthright. and I'm going to leave this part in, because it's, it's kind of customary. Yeah, it's, it's a little cool thing uh, that if you get a PB, you know, you uh, you make sure that you you watch uh, until the countdown between Sly and Carmelita, just just as a you know, so we can so we can all win, you know. Without his expertise, I'd have never found my way off that rooftop in Paris. But otherwise, um, guy couldn't ask for a better gang of friends. That is that is everything. Uh, Who could ever forget the lovely Carmelita? I can. Looks like we're not gonna be friends anymore. So I guess I guess I'll just yeah, cut it here. Death we'll, just, we'll just do this. We're back to playing cops and robbers. Shit. I thought whatever. for sure she was three of six. Three of six. But instead, right. she was.